The Jewish Manual, by Lady Judith Cohen Montefiore. Chapter 1. Soups. Stock or consomme. This is the basis of all kinds of soup and sauces. Shin of beef or ox cheek make excellent stock, although good gravy beef is sometimes preferred, the bones should always be broken, and the meat cut up, as the juices are better extracted, it is advisable to put on, at first, but very little water, and to add more when the first quantity is nearly dried up. The time required for boiling depends upon the quantity of meat, 6 pounds of meat will take about 5 hours, if bones, the same quantity will require double the time. Gravy beef with a knuckle of veal makes a fine and nutritious stock, the stock for white soups should be prepared with veal or white poultry. Very tolerable stock can be procured without purchasing meat expressly for the purpose, by boiling down bones and the trimmings of meat or poultry. The liquor in which beef or mutton intended for the table has been boiled, will also, with small additions and skillful flavoring, make an excellent soup at a trifling expense. To thicken soups, mix a little potato flour, ground rice or pounded vermicelli, in a little water, till perfectly smooth, add a little of the soup to it in a cup, until sufficiently thin, then pour it into the rest and boil it up, to prevent the raw taste it would otherwise have, the presence of the above ingredients should not be discovered, and judgment and care are therefore requisite. If coloring is necessary, a crust of bread stewed in the stock will give a fine brown, or the common browning may be used, it is made in the following manner. Put one pound of coarse brown sugar in a stew pan with a lump of clarified suet, when it begins to froth, Pour in a wine glass of port wine, half an ounce of black pepper, a little mace, four spoonsful of ketchup or Harvey's sauce, a little salt, and the peel of a lemon grated, boil all together, let it grow cold, when it must be schemed and bottled for use. It may also be prepared as required, by putting a small piece of clarified fat with one ounce of coarse sugar, in an iron spoon, melting them together, and stirring in a little ketchup and pepper. When good stock or consomme is prepared, it is very easy to form it into any kind of soup or sauce that may be required. Gravy Soup Take about 3 quarts of any strong stock, seasoned with a bunch of sweet herbs, a carrot, turnip and a head of celery, which must not be served in the soup. Vermicelli, macaroni or thin slices of carrot and small sippets of fried bread cut in fancy shapes, are usually served in this soup. Mock Turtle Half boil a well cleaned calf's head, then cut off all the meat in small square pieces, and break the bones, return it to the stew pan, with some good stock made of beef and veal, dredge in flour, add fried shallot, pepper, parsley, tarragon, a little mushroom ketchup, and a pint of white wine, simmer gently until the meat is perfectly soft and tender. Balls of force meat, and egg balls, should be put in a short time before serving, the juice of a lemon is considered an improvement. Mulegatani Soup Take two chickens, cut them up small, as if for fricassee, flour them well, put them in a saucepan with four onions shred, a piece of clarified fat, pepper, salt, and two tablespoons full of curry powder, let it simmer for an hour, then add three quarts of strong beef gravy, and let it continue simmering for another hour, before sent to table the juice of a lemon should be stirred in it, some persons approve of a little rice being boiled with the stock, and a pinch of saffron is also sometimes added. English Mule Gaitani Take a knuckle of veal, stew it till half done, then cut off the greatest part of the meat, and continue to stew down the bone in the stock, the meat must be cut into small pieces and fried with six onions thinly sliced, and a tablespoonful of curry powder, a desert spoonful of cayenne pepper and salt, add the stock and let the whole gently simmer for nearly an hour, flavoring it with a little Harvey sauce and lemon pickle. Soup a la julienne. Take a variety of vegetables, 
such as celery, carrots, turnips, leeks, cauliflower, lettuce, and onions, cut them in shreds of small size, place them in a stew pan with a little fine salad oil, stew them gently over the fire, adding weak broth from time to time, toast a few slices of bread and cut them into pieces the size and shape of shillings and crowns, soak them in the remainder of the broth, and when the vegetables are well done add all together and let it simmer for a few minutes, a lump of white sugar with pepper and salt are sufficient seasoning. Soup la Turk Make a good gravy from shin of beef, and cut up very small various sorts of vegetables of whatever may be in season, add spices, pepper, and salt, when it is all stewed well down together, set it to cool and take off the fat, then place it again on the fire to boil, and add to two quarts of soup, one quarter of a pound of rice, beat two yolks of eggs with a little of the stock, and when the rice is quite tender, stir them into the soup, taking the precaution not to let the soup boil, and to stir always the same way. Pepper pot. Cut small pieces of any vegetables, and add pieces of smoked or salt beef, and also of any cold poultry, roast beef, or mutton, stew all these together in two or three quarts of water, according to the quantity of meat, and see. It must be seasoned highly with whole peppers, allspice, mace, Jamaica pickles, and salt, it must be thoroughly stewed, and served, without straining, in a tureen. Potato Soup Grate a pound of fine potatoes in two quarts of water, add to it the trimmings of any meat, amounting to about a pound in quantity, a cup of rice, a few sweet herbs, and a head of celery, stew well till the liquor is considerably reduced, then strain it through a sieve, if, when strained, it is too thin and watery, add a little thickening, it should be flavored only with white pepper and salt. Soup Cressy Grate six carrots, and chop some onions with a lettuce, adding a few sweet herbs, put them all into a stew pan, with enough of good broth to moisten the whole, adding occasionally the remainder, when nearly done, put in the crumb of a French roll, and when soaked, strain the whole through a sieve, and serve hot in a tureen. Carrot Soup Take a dozen carrots scraped clean, rasp them, but do not use the core, two heads of celery, two onions thinly sliced, season to taste, and pour over a good stock, say about two quarts, boil it, then pass it through a sieve, it should be of the thickness of cream, return it to the saucepan, boil it up and squeeze in a little lemon juice, or add a little vinegar. Palestine Soup Stew a knuckle of veal, and a calf's foot, and one pound of chayasa, and a large fowl, in four quarts of water, add a piece of fresh lemon peel, six Jerusalem artichokes, a bunch of sweet herbs, a little salt and white pepper, and a little nutmeg, and a blade of mace, when the fowl is thoroughly done, remove the white parts to prepare for thickening, and let the rest continue stewing till the stock is sufficiently strong, the white parts of the fowl must be pounded and sprinkled with flour or ground rice, and stirred in the soup after it has been strained, until it thickens. A simple white soup. Break a knuckle of veal, place it in a stew pan, also a piece of chayasa, a carrot, two onions, three or four turnips, and a blade of mace, pour over two or three quarts of water or weak broth, season with salt, a sprig of parsley, and whole white pepper, when sufficiently boiled, skim and strain it, and thicken with pounded vermicelli. Vermicelli Soup Make a fine strong stock from the shin of beef, or any other part preferred, and add, a short time before serving, a handful of vermicelli, which should be broken, so that it may be in pieces of convenient length, the stock should be more or less flavored with vegetables, and herbs, according to taste. Matzo Soup Boil down half a shin of beef, four pounds of gravy beef, and a calf's foot may be added, if approved, in three or four quarts of water, season with celery, carrots, turnips, pepper, and salt, and a bunch of sweet herbs, let the whole stew gently for eight hours, then strain, and let it stand to get cold, when the fat must be removed, then return it to the saucepan to warm up. Ten minutes before serving, throw in the balls, from which the soup takes its name, 
and which are made in the following manner. Take half a pound of matzo flour, 2 ounces of chopped suet, season with a little pepper, salt, ginger, and nutmeg, mix with this, 4 beaten eggs, and make it into a paste, a small onion shred and browned in a desert spoonful of oil is sometimes added, the paste should be made into rather large balls, and care should be taken to make them very light. Tomato Soup Take a dozen unpeeled tomatoes, with a bit of clarified suet, or a little sweet oil, and a small Spanish onion, sprinkle with flour, and season with salt and cayenne pepper, and boil them in a little gravy or water, it must be stirred to prevent burning, then pass it through a sieve, and thin it with rich stock to the consistency of winter pea soup, flavor it with lemon juice, according to taste, after it has been warmed up and ready for serving. Amandigo Soup, a superior white soup. Put a knuckle of veal and a calf's foot into two quarts of water, with a blade of mace and a bunch of sweet herbs, a turnip, a little white pepper, and salt, when sufficiently done, strain and skim it, and add balls of forced meat, and egg balls. A quarter of an hour before serving beat up the yolks of four eggs with a desert spoonful of lemon juice, and three ounces of sweet almonds blanched and beaten with a spoonful of powdered white sugar. This mixture is to be stirred into the soup till it thickens, taking care to prevent its curdling. A fine vegetable or French soup. Take two quarts of strong stock made of gravy beef, add to this, carrots, turnips, leek, celery, broccoli, peas and French beans, all cut as small as possible, add a few lumps of white sugar, pepper and salt, let it simmer till the vegetables are perfectly soft, and throw in a few force meat balls. Asparagus Soup Take 8 pounds of gravy beef, with 5 pints of water, a few sweet herbs, and an onion shred, with a little pepper and salt, when the strength of the meat is sufficiently extracted, strain off the soup, and add to it a bundle of asparagus, cut small, with a little chopped parsley and mint, the asparagus should be thoroughly done. A few minutes before serving, throw in some fried bread cut up the size of dice, pound a little spinach to a pulp, and squeeze it through a cloth, stir about a teacup full of this essence into the soup, let it boil up after to prevent a raw taste. Soup Mager Chop three lettuces, a large handful of spinach, a little chervil, a head of celery, two or three carrots, and four onions, put them on the fire with half a pound of butter, and let them fry till slightly browned, season with a little salt, sifted white sugar, and white pepper, stew all gently in five pints of boiling water for about two hours and a half, and just before serving the soup, thicken it with the beaten yolks of four eggs, mixed first with a little of the soup, and then stirred into the remainder. Summer Pea Soup Take a peck of peas, separate the old from the young, boil the former till they are quite tender in good stock, then pass them through a sieve, and return them to the stock, add the young peas, a little chopped lettuce, small pieces of cucumber fried to a light brown, a little bit of mint, pepper, and salt, two or three lumps of sugar give a fine flavor. Winter Pea Soup Soak a quart of white peas in water, boil them till soft, in as much water as will cover them, pass them through a sieve, and add them to any broth that may be ready, a little piece of chayasa or smoked beef will improve the flavor, this soup should be served with mint and fried bread. Giblet Soup Add to a fine strong well seasoned beef stock, of about 3 quarts, 2 sets of giblets, which should be previously stewed separately in 1 quart of water, the gizzards require scalding for some time before they are put in with the rest, white pepper, salt, and the rind of lemon should season them, when they are tender, add them with their gravy to the stock, and boil for about 10 minutes together, then stir in a glass of white wine, a tablespoonful of mushroom ketchup, and the juice of half a lemon, it will require to be thickened with a little flour browned, the giblets are served in the soup. Barley Soup Put in a stew pan, a knuckle of mutton, or four pounds of the neck, with three quarts of water, boil it gently and keep it well schemed, a sprig of parsley, a couple of sliced turnips, a carrot, an onion, or more, if approved, with a little white pepper and salt, are sufficient seasoning, 
a breakfast cup full of barley should be scalded and put in the stew pan with the meat, if when done, the soup is thin and watery, a little prepared barley, mixed smoothly, should be stirred in. Soup de Poisson, or Fish Soup Make a good stock, by simmering a cod's head in water, enough to cover the fish, season it with pepper and salt, mace, celery, parsley, and a few sweet herbs, with two or three onions, when sufficiently done, strain it, and add cutlets of fish prepared in the following manner, cut very small, well trimmed cutlets from any fish, sole, or brill are perhaps best suited, stew them in equal quantities of water and wine, but not more than will cover them, with a large lump of butter, and the juice of a lemon, when they have stewed gently for about 15 or 20 minutes, add them to the soup, which thicken with cream and flour, serve the soup with the cutlets in a tureen, force meat balls of cod's liver are sometimes added. Ox tail soup. Have two well clean tails and an eats foot, cut them in small joints and soak them in water, put them in a stew pan with a large piece of clarified suet or fat, and let them simmer for 10 minutes, then put to them between 3 and 4 quarts of cold water, 4 onions, a bunch of sweet herbs, a carrot, a turnip, a head of celery, and season with whole pepper, allspice, 2 or 3 cloves, and salt, let it stew till the meat is tender enough to leave the bones, then remove it from them. As the bones are unsightly in the soup, thicken if necessary with browned flour, and just before serving, add a glass or more of port wine, and a little mushroom ketchup. Chapter 2 Sauces A rich brown gravy Take a little good beef consomme, or stock, a small piece of smoked beef, or chaosa, a lemon sliced, some chopped shallots, a couple of onions shred, a bay leaf, two or three cloves, and a little oil, simmer gently, and add a little minced parsley, and a few chopped mushrooms, skim and strain. Sauce piquant. The above may be rendered a sauce piquant by substituting a little vinegar, whole capers, allspice, and thyme, instead of the smoked beef and lemon, a few onions and piccalilli chopped finely, is a great addition when required to be very piquant. A sauce like the above is very good to serve with beef that has been boiled for broth. A good gravy for roast fowls. Take a little stock, squeeze in the juice of a lemon, add a little mushroom powder, cayenne pepper, and salt, thicken with flour. Another excellent receipt. Chop some mushrooms, young and fresh, salt them, and put them into a saucepan with a little gravy, made of the trimmings of the fowl, or a veal, a blade of mace, a little grated lemon peel, the juice of one lemon, thicken with flour, and when ready to serve, stir in a tablespoonful of white wine. Egg sauce, a fine white sauce for boiled chickens, turkeys, or white fricassees. Beat up the yolks of four eggs with the juice of a fine lemon, a teaspoonful of flour, and a little cold water, mix well together, and set it on the fire to thicken, stirring it to prevent curdling. This sauce will be found excellent, if not superior, in many cases where English cooks use melted butter. If capers are substituted for the lemon juice, this sauce will be found excellent for boiled lamb or mutton. Celery sauce. Cut in small pieces from about four to five heads of celery, which if not very young must be peeled, simmer it till tender in half a pint of veal gravy, if intended for white sauce, then add a spoonful of flour, the yolks of three eggs, white pepper, salt, and the juice of one lemon, these should be previously mixed together with a little water till perfectly smooth and thin, and be stirred in with the sauce, cream, instead of eggs, is used in English kitchens. Tomato sauce. Skin a dozen fine tomatoes, set them on the fire in a little water or gravy, beat them up with a little vinegar, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and salt, some persons like the yolk of an egg, well beaten added. Strain or not, as may be preferred. Gravy for a fowl, when there is no stock to make IT with. Take the feet, wash them, cut them small, also the neck and gizzard, season them with pepper and salt, onion and parsley, let them simmer gently for some time, in about a breakfast cup of water, then strain, thicken with flour, and add a little browning, 
and if liked, a small quantity of any store sauce at hand, and it will prove an excellent sauce. Savory jelly, for cold pies, or to garnish cold poultry. Have a bare knuckle of veal, and a calf's foot or cow heel, put it into a stew pan with a thick slice of smoked beef, a few herbs, a blade of mace, two or three onions, a little lemon peel, pepper and salt, and three or four pints of water, the French add a little tarragon vinegar. When it boils skim it, and when cold, if not clear, boil it a few minutes with the white and shell of an egg, and pass it through a jelly bag, this jelly with the juice of two or three lemons, and poured into a mold, in which are put the yolks of eggs boiled hard, forms a pretty supper dish. A fine sauce for steaks. Throw into a saucepan a piece of fat the size of an egg, with two or three onions sliced, let them brown, add a little gravy, flour, a little vinegar, a spoonful of mustard, and a little cayenne pepper, boil it and serve with the steaks. A fish sauce without butter. Put on, in a small saucepan, a cup of water, well flavored with vinegar, an onion chopped fine, a little rasped horseradish, pepper, and two or three cloves, and a couple of anchovies cut small, when it has boiled, stir carefully in the beaten yolks of two eggs, and let it thicken, until of the consistency of melted butter. A fine fish sauce. One teacupful of walnut pickle, the same of mushroom ditto, three anchovies pounded, one clove of garlic pounded, half a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper, all mixed well together, and bottled for use. A nice sauce to throw over broiled meats. Beat up a little salad oil with a tablespoonful of vinegar, mustard, pepper, and salt, and then stir in the yolk of an egg. This sauce should be highly seasoned. A sauce of this description is sometimes used to baste mutton while roasting. The meat should be scored in different places to allow the sauce to penetrate. Sauce for ducks. A little good gravy, with a glass of port wine, the juice of a lemon, highly seasoned with cayenne pepper. Bread sauce. Take a large onion and boil it, with a little pepper till quite soft, in milk, then take it out, and pour the milk over grated stale bread, then boil it up with a piece of butter, and dredge it with flour, it should be well beaten up with a silver fork. The above can be made without butter or milk, take a large onion, slice it thin, put it into a little veal gravy, add grated bread, pepper, and see, and the yolk and white of an egg well beaten. Apple sauce for goose. Slice some apples, put them in a little water to simmer till soft, beat them to a pulp, some consider a little powdered sugar an improvement, but as the acid of the apples is reckoned a corrective to the richness of the goose, it is usually preferred without. Mint sauce. Mix vinegar with brown sugar, let it stand about an hour, then add chopped mint, and stir together. Onion sauce. Slice finely, and brown in a little oil, two or three onions, put them in a little beef gravy, and add cayenne pepper, salt, and the juice of a lemon. This is a nice sauce for steaks. Oiled butter. Put some good butter into a cup or jar, and place it before the fire till it becomes an oil, then pour it off, so that all sediment may be avoided. To draw good gravy. Cut some gravy beef into small pieces, put them in a jar, and set it in a saucepan of cold water to boil gently for 7 or 8 hours, adding, from time to time, more water as the original quantity boils away. The gravy thus made will be the essence of the meat, and in cases where nutriment is required in the smallest compass, will be of great service. Soups are stronger when the meat is cut, and gravy drawn before water is added. Truffle sauce. Peel and slice as many truffles as required, simmer them gently with a little butter, when they are tender, Add to them good white or brown consomme, lemon juice, pepper, salt, nutmeg, and a very little white wine. Mushroom sauce. Take about a pint of fine young button mushrooms, let them stew gently in a white veal gravy seasoned with salt, pepper, a blade of mace, and if approved, the grated peel of half a lemon, it should be thickened with flour and the yolk of an egg stirred in it, just before serving, English cooks add cream to this sauce. Sweet sauce. The usual way of making sauces for puddings, 
is by adding sugar to melted butter, or thin egg sauce, flavoring it with white wine, brandy, lemon peel, or any other flavor approved of. Melted butter. Although this sauce is one of the most simple, it is very rarely that it is well made. Mix with 4 ounces of butter, a desert spoonful of flour, when well mixed, add 3 tablespoonsful of water, put it into a clean saucepan kept for the purpose, and stir it carefully one way till it boils, white sauce to throw over vegetables served on toast, is made in the same way, only putting milk and water, instead of water only. Sauce without butter for boiled puddings. Mix a tablespoonful of flour, with two of water, add a little wine, lemon peel grated, a small bit of clarified suet, of the size of a walnut, grated nutmeg, and sugar, put on in a saucepan, stirring one way, and adding water if too thick, lemon juice, or essence of noyau, or almonds may be substituted to vary the flavor. Sauce Robert for Steaks Chop up some onions, throw them into a saucepan with a bit of clarified fat, let them fry till brown, then add pepper, salt, a little gravy, mustard, lemon juice, and vinegar, boil it all, and pour over the steaks. Caper Sauce this is merely melted butter with a few pickled capers simmered in it, or they may be put into a sauce made of broth thickened with egg, and a little flour. Savory Herb Powder It is useful to select a variety of herbs, so that they may always be at hand for use. The following are considered to be an excellent selection, parsley, savory, thyme, sweet majoram, shallot, chervil, and sage, in equal quantities, dry these in the oven, Pound them finely and keep them in bottles well stopped. Seasoning for ducks and geese. Mix chopped onion with an equal quantity of chopped sage, three times as much grated stale bread, a little shred suet, pepper, salt, and a beaten egg to bind it. This is generally used for geese and ducks. The onions are sometimes boiled first to render them less strong. English egg sauce. Boil two eggs hard, chop them finely, and warm them up in finely made melted butter, add a little white pepper, salt, a blade of mace, and a very small quantity of nutmeg. Sauce a la tartar. Mix the yolk of an egg with oil, vinegar, chopped parsley, mustard, pepper, and salt. A spoonful of pate de diable or French mustard, renders the sauce more piquant. A fine sauce for roast mutton. Mix a little port wine in some gravy, two tablespoonfuls of vinegar, one of oil, a shallot minced, and a spoonful of mustard, just before the mutton is served, pour the sauce over it, then sprinkle it with fried bread crumbs, and then again baste the meat with the sauce, this is a fine addition to the mutton. Asparagus sauce, to serve with lamb chops. Cut some asparagus, or sprue, into half inch lengths, wash them, and throw them into half a pint of gravy made from beef, veal, or mutton thickened, and seasoned with salt, white pepper, and a lump of white sugar, the chops should be delicately fried and the sauce served in the center of the dish. Brown Cucumber Sauce Peel and cut in thick slices, one or more fresh cucumbers, fry them until brown in a little butter, or clarified fat, then add to them a little strong beef gravy, pepper, salt, and a spoonful of vinegar, some cooks add a chopped onion browned with the cucumbers. White Cucumber Sauce Take out the seeds of some fresh young cucumbers, quarter them, and cut them into pieces of 2 inch lengths, let them lay for an hour in vinegar and water, then simmer them till thoroughly soft, in a veal broth seasoned with pepper, salt, and a little lemon juice, when ready for serving, pour off the gravy and thicken it with the yolks of a couple of eggs stirred in, add it to the saucepan, warm up, taking care that it does not curdle. Brown flour for making soups and gravies dark and thick. Spread flour on a tin, and place it in a Dutch oven before the fire, or in a gentle oven till it browns, it must often be turned, that the flour may be equally colored throughout. A small quantity of this prepared and laid by for use, will be found useful. Brown bread crumbs. Grate into fine crumbs, about 5 or 6 ounces of stale bread, and brown them in a gentle oven or before the fire, this is a more delicate way of browning them than by frying. Crisp Parsley 
wash and drain a handful of fresh young sprigs of parsley, dry them with a cloth, place them before the fire on a dish, turn them frequently, and they will be perfectly crisp in 10 minutes. Fried Parsley When the parsley is prepared as above, fry it in butter or clarified suet, then drain it on a cloth placed before the fire. Bread Crumbs for Frying Cut slices of bread without crust, and dry them gradually in a cool oven till quite dry and crisp, then roll them into fine crumbs, and put them in a jar for use. Spinach Green Pound to a pulp in a mortar a handful of spinach, and squeeze it through a hair sieve, then put it into a cup or jar, and place it in a basin of hot water for a few minutes, or it may be allowed to simmer on the fire, a little of this stirred into spring soups, improve their appearance. Velouté, Béchamel These preparations are so frequently mentioned in modern cookery, that we shall give the receipts for them, although they are not appropriate for the Jewish kitchen. Velouté is a fine white sauce, made by reducing a certain quantity of well-flavored consomme or stock, over a charcoal fire, and mixing it with boiling cream, stirring it carefully till it thickens. Béchamel is another sort of fine white stock, thickened with cream, there is more flavoring in this than the former, the stock is made of veal, with some of the smoked meats used in English kitchens, butter, mace, onion, mushrooms, bay leaf, nutmeg, and a little salt. An excellent substitute for these sauces can in Jewish kitchens be made in the following way. Take some veal broth flavored with smoked beef, and the above named seasonings, then beat up two or three yolks of eggs, with a little of the stock and a spoonful of potato flour, stir this into the broth, until it thickens, it will not be quite as white, but will be excellent. Force meat or farsi. Under this head is included the various preparations used for balls, tisselies, fritters, and stuffings for poultry and veal, it is a branch of cooking which requires great care and judgment, the proportions should be so blended as to produce a delicate, yet savory flavor, without allowing any particular herb or spice to predominate. The ingredients should always be pounded well together in a mortar, not merely chopped and moistened with egg as is usually done by inexperienced cooks, force meat can be served in a variety of forms, and is so useful a resource, that it well repays the attention it requires. A superior force meat for risales, fritters, and savory meatballs. Scrape half a pound of the fat of smoked beef, and a pound of lean veal, free from skin, vein, or sinew, pound it finely in a mortar with chopped mushrooms, a little minced parsley, salt, and pepper, and grated lemon peel, then have ready the crumb of two French rolls soaked in good gravy, press out the moisture, and add the crumb to the meat with three beaten eggs, if the force meat is required to be very highly flavored, the gravy in which the rolls are soaked should be seasoned with mushroom. Powder, a spoonful of ketchup, a bay leaf, an onion, pepper, salt, and lemon juice, add this panada to the pounded meat and eggs, form the mixture into any form required, and either fry or warm in gravy, according to the dish for which it is intended. Any cold meats pounded, seasoned, and made according to the above method are excellent, the seasoning can be varied, or rendered simpler if required. Common Veal, Stuffing Have equal quantities of finely shred suet and grated crumbs of bread, add chopped sweet herbs, grated lemon peel, pepper, and salt, pound it in a mortar, this is also used for white poultry, with the addition of a little grated smoked beef, or a piece of the root of a tongue pounded and mixed with the above ingredients. Fish force meat. Chop finely any kind of fish, that which has been already dressed will answer the purpose, then pound it in a mortar with a couple of anchovies, or a little anchovy essence, the yolk of a hard boiled egg, a little butter, parsley, or any other herb which may be approved, grated lemon peel, and a little of the juice, then add a little bread previously soaked, and mix the whole into a paste, and form into balls, or use for stuffing, and see. The liver or row of fish is well suited to add to the fish, as it is rich and delicate. Force meat for dressing fish fillets. Pound finely anchovies, grated bread, chopped parsley, and the yolk of a hard boiled egg, add grated lemon peel, a little lemon juice, pepper, and salt, 
and make into a paste with two eggs. Force meat for dressing cutlets, etc. Add to grated stale bread, an equal quantity of chopped parsley, season it well, and mix it with clarified suet, then brush the cutlets with beaten yolks of eggs, lay on the mixture thickly with a knife, and sprinkle over with dry and fine bread crumbs. Egg Balls Beat the hard yolks of eggs in a mortar, make it into a paste with the yolk of a raw egg, form the paste into very small balls, and throw them into boiling water for a minute or so, to harden them. Preparation for Cutlets of Fowl or Veal Make a smooth batter of flour, and a little salad oil, and two eggs, a little white pepper, salt, and nutmeg, turn the cutlets well in this mixture, and fry a light brown, garnish with slices of lemon, and crisp parsley, this is done by putting in the parsley after the cutlets have been fried, it will speedily crisp, it should then be drained, to prevent its being greasy. Chapter 3 Fish Preliminary Remarks When fish is to be boiled, it should be rubbed lightly over with salt, and set on the fire in a saucepan or fish kettle sufficiently large, in hard cold water, with a little salt, a spoonful or two of vinegar is sometimes added, which has the effect of increasing its firmness. Fish for broiling should be rubbed over with vinegar, well dried in a cloth and floured. The fire must be clear and free from smoke, the gridiron made quite hot, and the bars buttered before the fish is put on it. Fish to be fried should be rubbed in with salt, dried, rolled in a cloth, and placed for a few minutes before the fire previous to being put in the pan. Fish fried in oil. Soles, place, or salmon, are the best kinds of fish to dress in this manner, although various other sorts are frequently used. When prepared by salting or drying, as above directed, have a dish ready with beaten eggs, turn the fish well over in them, and sprinkle it freely with flour, so that the fish may be covered entirely with it, then place it in a pan with a good quantity of the best frying oil at boiling heat, fry the fish in it gently, till of a fine equal brown color, when done, it should be placed on a cloth before the fire for the oil to drain off, great care should be observed that the oil should have ceased to bubble when the fish is put in, otherwise it will be greasy, the oil will serve for two or three times if strained off and poured into a jar. Fish prepared in this way is usually served cold. Fried Soles in the English way. Prepare the soles as directed in the last receipt, brush them over with egg, dredge them with stale bread crumbs, and fry in boiling butter, this method is preferable when required to be served hot. Escobeche. Take some cold fried fish, place it in a deep pan, then boil half a pint of vinegar with two tablespoons full of water, and one of oil, a little grated ginger, allspice, cayenne pepper, two bay leaves, a little salt, and a tablespoonful of lemon juice, with sliced onions, when boiling, pour it over the fish, cover the pan, and let it stand 24 hours before serving. Fish stewed white. Put an onion, finely chopped, into a stew pan, with a little oil, till the onion becomes brown, then add half a pint of water, and place the fish in the stew pan, seasoning with pepper, salt, mace, ground allspice, nutmeg, and ginger, let it stew gently till the fish is done, then prepare the beaten yolks of four eggs, with the juice of two lemons, and a teaspoonful of flour, a tablespoonful of cold water, and a little saffron, mix well in a cup, and pour it into the stew pan, stirring it carefully one way until it thickens. Balls should be thrown in about 20 minutes before serving, they are made in the following way, take a little of the fish, the liver, and roe, if there is any, beat it up finely with chopped parsley, and spread warmed butter, crumbs of bread, and seasoning according to taste, form this into a paste with eggs, and make it into balls of a moderate size, this is a very nice dish when cold, garnish with sliced lemon and parsley. An excellent receipt for stewed fish in the Dutch fashion. Take three or four parsley roots, cut them into pieces, slice several onions and boil in a pint of water till tender, season with lemon juice, vinegar, saffron, pepper, salt, and mace, then add the fish, and let it stew till nearly finished, when remove it, and thicken the gravy with a little flour and butter, 
and the yolk of one egg, then return the fish to the stew pan, with balls made as directed in the preceding receipt, and boil up. Fish stewed brown. Fry some fish of a light brown, either soles, slices of salmon, halibut, or place, let an onion brown in a little oil, add to it a cup of water, a little mushroom ketchup or powder, cayenne pepper, salt, nutmeg, and lemon juice, put the fish into a stew pan with the above mixture, and simmer gently till done, then take out the fish and thicken the gravy with a little brown flour, and stir in a glass of port wine, a few truffles, or mushrooms, are an improvement. Water Sushi Take a portion of the fish intended to be dressed, and stew it down with three pints of water, parsley roots, and chopped parsley, and then pulp them through a sieve, then add the rest of the fish, with pepper, salt, and seasoning, and serve in a deep dish. A superior receipt for stewed carp. Clean the fish thoroughly, put it into a saucepan, with a strong rich gravy, season with onion, parsley roots, allspice, nutmegs, beaten cloves, and ginger, let it stew very gently till nearly done, then mix port wine and vinegar in equal quantities, coarse brown sugar and lemon juice, a little flour, with some of the gravy from the saucepan, mix well and pour over the fish, let it boil till the gravy thickens. Pike is excellent stewed in this manner. Fillets of fish. Fillets of salmon, soles, and sea, fried of a delicate brown according to the receipt already given, and served with a fine gravy is a very nice dish. If required to be very savory, make a fish force meat, and lay it thickly on the fish before frying, fillets dressed in this way are usually arranged round the dish, and served with a sauce made of good stock, thickened and seasoned with cayenne pepper, lemon juice, and mushroom essence, piccalilli are sometimes added cut small. Baked Haddock Carefully clean a fresh haddock, and fill it with a fine force meat, and sew it in securely, give the fish a dredging of flour, and pour on warmed butter, sprinkle it with pepper and salt, and set it to bake in a Dutch oven before the fire, basting it, from time to time, with butter warmed, and capers, it should be of a rich dark brown, and it is as well to dredge two or three times with flour while at the fire, the continual bastings will produce sufficient sauce to serve with it without any other being added. Mackerel and whiting prepared in this manner are excellent, the latter should be covered with a layer of bread crumbs, and arranged in a ring, and the force meat, instead of stuffing them, should be formed into small balls, and served in the dish as a garnish. The force meat must be made as for veal stuffing, with the addition of a couple of minced anchovies, cayenne pepper, and butter instead of suet. A nice way of dressing red herrings. Open them, cut off the tails and heads, soak them in hot water for an hour, then wipe them dry, mix with warmed butter one beaten egg, pour this over the herrings, sprinkle with bread crumbs, flour, and white pepper, broil them and serve them very hot. Baked mackerel with vinegar. Cut off the heads and tails, open, and clean them, lay them in a deep pan with a few bay leaves, whole pepper, half a teaspoonful of cloves, and a whole spoonful of allspice, pour over equal quantities of vinegar and water, and bake for an hour and a half, in a gentle oven, herrings and sprats are also dressed according to this receipt. Fish Salad Cut in small pieces any cold dressed fish, turbot, or salmon are the best suited, mix it with half a pint of small salad, and a lettuce cut small, two onions boiled till tender and mild, and a few truffles thinly sliced, pour over a fine salad mixture, and arrange it into a shape, high in the center, and garnish with hard eggs cut in slices, a little cucumber mixed with the salad is an improvement. The mixture may either be a common salad mixture, or made as follows, take the yolks of three hard boiled eggs, with a spoonful of mustard, and a little salt, mix these with a cup of cream, and four tablespoons full of vinegar, the different ingredients should be added carefully and worked together smoothly, the whites of the eggs may be trimmed and placed in small heaps round the dish as a garnish. Impanada Cut in small pieces halibut, place, or soles, place them in a deep dish in alternate layers, with slices of potatoes and dumplings made of short crust paste, sweetened with brown sugar, season well with small pickles, peppers, gherkins, 
or West India pickles, throw over a little water and butter warmed, and bake it thoroughly. White bait. This is such a delicate fish that there are few cooks who attempt to dress it without spoiling it, they should not be touched but thrown from the dish into a cloth with a handful of flour, shake them lightly, but enough to cover them well with the flour, then turn them into a sieve expressly for bait to free them from too great a quantity of the flour, then throw the fish into a pan with plenty of boiling butter, they must remain but an instant, for they are considered spoiled if they become the least brown, they should be placed lightly on the dish piled up high in the center, brown bread and butter is always served with them, when deviled they are also excellent, and are permitted to become brown, they are then sprinkled with cayenne pepper, and a little salt, and served with lemon juice. This receipt was given by a cook who dressed white bait to perfection. A Dutch Frikandel Take two pounds of dressed fish, remove the skin and bones, cut in small pieces with two or three anchovies, and season well, soak the crumb of a French roll in milk, beat it up with the fish and three eggs, butter a mold, sprinkle it with raspings, place in the fish and bake it, when done, turn out and serve either dry or with anchovy sauce, if served dry, finely grated crumbs of bread should be sprinkled thickly over it, and it should be placed for a few minutes before the fire to brown. Fish Fritters Make a force meat of any cold fish, form it into thin cakes, and fry of a light brown, or enclose them first in thin paste and then fry them. The rows of fish or the livers are particularly nice prepared in this way. Fish Omelet Shred finely any cold fish, season it, and mix with beaten eggs, make it into a paste, fry in thin cakes like pancakes, and serve hot on a napkin, there should be plenty of boiling butter in the pan, as they should be moist and rich, there should be more eggs in the preparation for omelets than for fritters. Scalloped fish. Take any dressed fish, break it in small pieces, put it into tin scallops, with a few crumbs of bread, a good piece of butter, a little cream if approved, white pepper, salt, and nutmeg, bake in an oven for 10 minutes, or brown before the fire, two or three mushrooms mixed, or an anchovy will be found an improvement. Another way. Break the fish into pieces, pour over the beaten yolk of an egg, sprinkle with pepper and salt, strew with bread crumbs, chopped parsley, and grated lemon peel, and squeeze in the juice of lemon, drop over a little warmed butter, and brown before the fire. Chapter 4 Directions for Various Ways of Dressing Meat and Poultry Introductory Remarks Boiling is the most simple manner of cooking, the great art in this process is to boil the article sufficiently, without its being overdone, the necessity of slow boiling cannot be too strongly impressed upon the cook, as the contrary, renders it hard and of a bad color, the average time of boiling for fresh meat is half an hour to every pound, salt meat requires half as long again, and smoked meat still longer, the lid of the saucepan should only be removed for scheming, which is an essential process. Roasting chiefly depends on the skillful management of the fire, it is considered that a joint of 8 pounds requires 2 hours roasting, when first put down it should be basted with fresh dripping, and afterwards with its own dripping, it should be sprinkled with salt, and repeatedly dredged with flour, which browns and makes it look rich and frothy. Broiling requires a steady clear fire, free from flame and smoke, the gridiron should be quite hot before the article is placed on it, and the bars should be rubbed with fat, or if the article is thin-skinned and delicate, with chalk, the gridiron should be held aslant to prevent the fat dripping into the fire, the bars of a gridiron should be close and fine. Frying is easier than broiling, the fat, oil or butter in which the article is fried must be boiling, but have ceased to bubble before it is put in the pan, or it will be greasy and black, there is now a new description of frying pan, called a sauté pan, and which will be found extremely convenient for frying small cutlets or collops. Stewing is a more elaborate mode of boiling, a gentle heat with frequent schemings, are the points to be observed. Glazing is done by brushing melted jelly over the article to be glazed and letting it cool, and then adding another coat, or in some cases two or three, this makes any cold meats or poultry have an elegant appearance. Blanching makes the article plump and white. 
it should be set on the fire in cold water, boil up and then be immersed in cold water, where it should remain some little time. Larding, the French term is peak, which the inexperienced Jewish cook may not be acquainted with, we therefore use the term in common use, is a term given to a certain mode of garnishing the surface of meat or poultry, it is inserting small pieces of the fat of smoked meats, truffles, or tongue, which are trimmed into slips of equal length and size, into the flesh of the article at regular distances, and is affected by means of larding pins. Poli and Blanc, are terms used in modern cookery for a very expensive mode of stewing, it is done by stewing the article with meat, vegetables, and fat of smoked meats, all well seasoned, instead of placing it to stew in water it is placed on slices of meat covered with slices of fat and the vegetables and seasoning added, then water enough to cover the whole is added. Blanc differs from poli, in having a quantity of suet added, and being boiled down before the article is placed to stew in it. Braising is a similar process to poli, but less meat and vegetable is used. To clarify suet. Melt down with care fine fresh suet, either beef or veal, put it into a jar, and set it in a stew pan of water to boil, putting in a sprig of rosemary, or a little orange flower water while melting, this is a very useful preparation and will be found, if adopted in English kitchens, to answer the purpose of lard and is far more delicate and wholesome, it should be well beaten till quite light with a wooden fork. Oleo. Put 8 pounds of beef in sufficient water to cover it, when the water boils take out the meat, skim off the fat, and then return the meat to the stew pan, adding at the same time two fine white cabbages without any of the stock or hard parts, season with pepper, salt, and a teaspoonful of white sugar, let it simmer on a slow fire for about 5 hours, about an hour before serving, add half a pound of corsa, which greatly improves the flavor. An excellent receipt for stewing a rump of beef. Chop fine a large onion, four bay leaves, and a little parsley, add to these half an ounce of ground ginger, a teaspoonful of salt, a blade of mace, a little ground allspice, some lemon sliced, and some of the peel grated, rub all these ingredients well into the meat, then place it into a stew pan with three parts of a cup of vinegar, a calf's foot cut in small pieces and a pint of water, Stew gently till tender, when the fat must be carefully skimmed off the gravy, which must be strained and poured over the meat. A la mode beef, or sour meat. Cover a piece of the ribs of beef boned and filleted, or a piece of the round with vinegar diluted with water, season with onions, pepper, salt, whole allspice, and three or four bay leaves, add a cupful of raspings, and let the whole stew gently for three or four hours, According to the weight of the meat, this dish is excellent when cold. A rump steak stewed in the same way will be found exceedingly fine. Kimmel meat. Place a small piece of the rump of beef, or the undercut of a sirloin in a deep pan with three pints of vinegar, two ounces of caraway seeds tied in a muslin bag, salt, pepper, and spices, cover it down tight, and bake thoroughly in a slow oven. This is a fine relish for luncheons. Beef and beans. Take a piece of brisket of beef, cover it with water, when boiling skim off the fat, add one quarter of French beans cut small, two onions cut in quarters, season with pepper and salt, and when nearly done take a dessert spoonful of flour, one of coarse brown sugar, and a large teacupful of vinegar, mix them together and stir in with the beans, and continue stewing for about half an hour longer. Kugel and Kamen. Soak one pint of Spanish peas and one pint of Spanish beans all night in three pints of water, take two marrow bones, a calf's foot, and three pounds of fine gravy beef, crack the bones and tie them to prevent the marrow escaping, and put all together into a pan, then take one pound of flour, half a pound of shred suet, a little grated nutmeg and ground ginger, cloves and allspice, one pound of coarse brown sugar, and the crumb of a slice of bread, first soaked in water and pressed dry, mix all. These ingredients together into a paste, grease a quart basin and put it in, covering the basin with a plate set in the middle of the pan with the beans, meat, and see cover the pan lightly down with coarse brown paper, and let it remain all the night and the next day, until required, in a baker's oven, when done, 
take out the basin containing the pudding, and skim the fat from the gravy which must be served as soup, the meat, and C, is extremely savory and nutritious, but is not a very seemly dish for table. The pudding must be turned out of the basin, and a sweet sauce flavored with lemon and brandy is a fine addition. Sauerkraut. Boil about 7 or 8 pounds of beef, either brisket, or a fillet off the shoulder, in enough water to cover it, when it has boiled for 1 hour, add as much sauerkraut, which is a German preparation, as may be approved, it should then stew gently for 4 hours and be served in a deep dish. The Germans are not very particular in removing the fat, but it is more delicate by so doing. Beef with celery, and white beans and peas. Soak for 12 hours one pint of dried white peas, and half a pint of the same kind of beans, they must be well soaked, and if very dry, may require longer than 12 hours, put a nice piece of brisket of about 8 pounds weight in a stew pan with the peas and beans, and 3 heads of celery cut in small pieces, put water enough to cover, and season with pepper and salt only, let it all stew slowly till the meat is extremely tender and the peas and beans quite soft, then add 4 large lumps of sugar and nearly a teacup of vinegar, this is a very fine stew. Beef Collops Cut thin slices off from any tender part, divide them into pieces of the size of a wine biscuit, flatten and flour them, and lightly fry in clarified fat, lay them in a stew pan with good stock, season to taste, have pickled gherkins chopped small, and add to the gravy a few minutes before serving. To warm cold roast beef when not sufficiently done. Cut it in slices, also slice some beetroot or cucumber and put them in a saucepan with a little gravy which need not be strong, two tablespoons full of vinegar, one of oil, pepper, salt, a little chopped lettuce and a few peas, simmer till the vegetables and meat are sufficiently dressed. To hash beef. The meat should be put on the fire in a little broth or gravy, with a little fried onion, pepper, salt, and a spoonful of ketchup, or any other sauce at hand, let it simmer for about 10 minutes, then mix in a cup a little flour with a little of the gravy, and pour it into the stew pan to thicken the rest, sippets of toast should be served with hashes, a little port wine, a pinch of saffron, or a piece corsa may be considered great improvements. Steaks with CHES nuts. Take a fine thick steak, half fry it, then flour and place it in a stew pan with a little good beef gravy, season with cayenne pepper and salt, when it has simmered for about 10 minutes, add a quarter of a hundred good chestnuts, peeled and the inner skin scraped off, let them stew with the steak till well done, this is a very nice dish, a little espagnole sauce heightens the flavor. A simple stewed steak. Put a fine steak in a stew pan with a large piece of clarified suet or fat, and a couple of onions sliced, let the steak fry for a few minutes, turning it several times, then cover the steak with gravy, or even water will answer the purpose, with a teacup full of button onions, or a Spanish onion sliced, a little lemon peel, pepper, salt, and a little allspice, simmer till the steak is done, when the steak must be removed and the gravy be carefully schemed, then add to it a little browning and a spoonful of mushroom ketchup, the steak must be kept on a hot stove or returned to the stew pan to warm up. If the gravy is not thick enough, stir in a little flour. Brisket stewed with onions and raisins. Stew about 5 pounds of brisket of beef in sufficient water to cover, season with allspice, pepper, salt, and nutmeg, and when nearly done, add 4 large onions cut in pieces and half a pound of raisins stoned, let them remain simmering till well done, and just before serving, stir in a teaspoonful of brown sugar and a tablespoonful of flour. Brisket stewed. Take about 6 or 7 pounds of brisket of beef, place it in a stew pan with only enough water to cover it, season with a little spice tied in a bag, when the meat is tender and the spices sufficiently extracted to make the gravy rich and strong, part of it must be removed to another saucepan, have ready a variety of vegetables cut into small shapes, such as turnips, carrots, mushrooms, cauliflowers, or whatever may be in season, Stew them gently till tender in the gravy, the meat must then be glazed and the gravy poured in the dish, and the vegetables arranged round. Beef Ragu 
Take a small well-cut piece of lean beef, lard it with the fat of smoked beef, and stew it with good gravy, highly seasoned with allspice, cloves, pepper, and salt. When the meat is well done remove it from the gravy, which skim carefully and free from every particle of fat, and add to it a glass of port wine, the juice of a lemon, half a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper, and a little mushroom ketchup, the beef should be glazed when required to have an elegant appearance. A few very small force meat balls must be poached in the gravy, which must be poured over the meat, and the balls arranged round the dish, this is a very savory and pretty dish. To salt beef. This may be done by mixing a pound of common salt, half an ounce of salt petri and one ounce of coarse brown sugar, and rubbing the meat well with it, daily for a fortnight or less, according to the weather, and the degree of salt that the meat is required to have. Or by boiling 8 ounces of salt, 8 ounces of sugar, and half an ounce of salt petri in 2 quarts of water, and pouring it over the meat, and letting it stand in it for 8 or 10 days. Spiced Beef Take a fine thick piece of brisket of beef not fat, let it lay 3 days in a pickle, as above, take it out and rub in a mixture of spices consisting of equal quantities of ground allspice, black pepper, cloves, ginger and nutmegs, and a little brown sugar, repeat this daily for a week, then cover it with pounded dried sweet herbs, roll, or tie it tightly, put it into a pan with very little water, and bake slowly for 8 hours, then take it out, untie it and put a heavy weight upon it, this. It a fine relish when eaten cold. Smoked Beef As there are seldom conveniences in private kitchens for smoking meats, it will generally be the best and cheapest plan to have them ready prepared for cooking. All kinds of meat smoked and salted, are to be met with in great perfection at all the Hebrew butchers. Korosa, that most refined and savory of all sausages, is to be also procured at the same places. It is not only excellent fried in slices with poached eggs or stewed with rice, but imparts a delicious flavor to stews, soups, and sauces, and is one of the most useful resources of the Jewish kitchen. A white fricando of veal. Take four or five pounds of breast of veal, or fillet from the shoulder, stuff it with a finely flavored veal stuffing and put it into a stew pan with water sufficient to cover it, a calf's foot cut in pieces is sometimes added, season with one onion, a blade of mace, white pepper, and salt, and a sprig of parsley, stew the whole gently until the meat is quite tender, then skim and strain the gravy and stir in the beaten yolks of four eggs, and the juice of two lemons previously mixed smoothly. With a portion of the gravy, button mushrooms, or pieces of celery stewed with the veal are sometimes added by way of varying the flavor, egg, and force meat balls garnish the dish. When required to look elegant it should be peak. A brown fricassee. Cut a breast of veal in pieces, fry them lightly and put them into a stew pan with a good beef gravy, seasoned with white pepper, salt, a couple of sliced onions, previously browned in a little oil, and a piece of whole ginger, let it simmer very slowly for two hours taking care to remove the scum or fat, have ready some rich force meat and spread it about an inch thick over three cold hard boiled eggs, fry these for a few moments and put them in the saucepan with the veal, before serving, these. Balls should be cut in quarters, and the gravy rendered more savory by the addition of lemon juice and half a glass of white wine, or a tablespoonful of walnut liquor, if the gravy is not sufficiently thick by long stewing, a little brown flour may be stirred in. Calves head stewed. Clean and soak the head till the cheekbone can be easily removed, then parboil it and cut it into pieces of moderate size, and place them in about a quart of stock made from shin of beef, the gravy must be seasoned highly with echelots, a small head of celery, a small bunch of sweet herbs, an onion, a carrot, a little mace, a dozen cloves, a piece of lemon peel, and a sprig of parsley, salt, and pepper, it must be strained before the head is added, fine force meat balls rolled in egg and fried. Are served in the dish, as well as small fritters made with the brains, when ready for serving, a glass and half of white wine and the juice of a lemon are added to the gravy. Calves feet with Spanish sauce. Having cleaned, boiled and split two fine feet, dip them into egg and bread crumbs mixed with chopped parsley and collot, 
a few ground cloves, a little nutmeg, pepper, and salt, fry them a fine brown, arrange them in the dish and pour the sauce over. Make the sauce in the following manner, slice two fine Spanish onions, put them in a saucepan, with some chopped truffles or mushrooms, a little suet, cayenne, and white pepper, salt, one or two small lumps of white sugar, and let all simmer in some good strong stock till the gravy has nearly boiled away, then stir in a wine glass of Madeira wine, and a little lemon juice, it should then be returned to the saucepan, to be made thoroughly hot before serving. Calves feet o fritter. Simmer them for 4 hours in water till the meat can be taken easily from the bone, then cut them in handsome pieces, season with pepper and salt, dip them in egg, and sprinkle thickly with grated bread crumbs, and fry of a fine even brown, they may be served dry or with any sauce that may be approved. The liquor should continue to stew with the bones, and can be used for jelly. Calves feet stewed for invalids. Clean and soak a fine foot, put it on in very little water, let it simmer till tender, then cut it in pieces, without removing the bone, and continue stewing for three hours, till they become perfectly soft, if the liquor boils away, add a little more water, but there should not be more liquor than can be served in the dish with the foot, the only seasoning requisite is a little salt and white pepper, and a sprig of parsley, or a pinch of saffron to improve the appearance, a little delicately. Made thin egg sauce, with a flavor of lemon juice, may be served in a sauce tureen if approved, sippets of toast or well-boiled rice to garnish the dish, may also be added, and will not be an unacceptable addition. Tendons of veal. This is a very fine and nutritious dish, cut from the bones of a breast of veal the tendons which are round the front, trim and blanch them, put them with slices of smoked beef into a stew pan with some shavings of veal, a few herbs, a little sliced lemon, two or three onions, and a little broth, they must simmer for seven or eight hours, when done, thicken the gravy and add white wine and mushrooms and egg balls, a few peas with the tendons will be found excellent, a piece of mint and a little. White sugar will then be requisite. Fricando of veal. Take a piece from the shoulder, about three to four pounds, trim it and form it into a well-shaped even piece, the surface of which should be quite smooth, peak it thickly, put it into a stew pan with a couple of onions, a carrot sliced, sweet herbs, two or three bay leaves, a large piece of chaisa or a slice of the root of a tongue smoked, a little whole pepper and salt, cover it with a gravy made from the trimmings of the veal, and stew till extremely tender, which can be proved by probing. It with a fine skewer, then reduce part of the gravy to a glaze, glaze the meat with it and serve on a puree of vegetables. Collard veal. Remove the bones, gristle, and see, from a nice piece of veal, the breast is the best part for the purpose, season the meat well with chopped herbs, mace, pepper, and salt, then lay between the veal slices of smoked tongue variegated with beetroot, chopped parsley, and hard yolks of eggs, roll it up tightly in a cloth, simmer for some hours till tender, when done, it should have a weight laid on it to press out the liquor. Curried veal. Cut a breast of veal into pieces, fry lightly with a chopped onion, then rub the veal over with curry powder, put it into a good gravy of veal and beef, season simply with pepper, salt, and lemon juice. Fowls curried are prepared in the same way. Cutlets. Cut them into proper shape and beat them with a roller until the fiber of the meat is entirely broken, if this is not done, they will be hard, they must then be covered with egg and sprinkled with flour, or a preparation for cutlets may be spread over them, and then fry them of a fine brown, remove the cutlets to a hot dish, and add to the fat in which the cutlets have been fried, a spoonful of flour, a small cup of gravy, salt, pepper, and a little lemon juice or lemon pickle. Cutlets à la française. French cooks cut them thinner than the English, and trim them into rounds of the size of a teacup, they must be brushed over with egg, and sprinkled with salt, white pepper, mushroom powder, and grated lemon peel, put them into a sauté pan and fry of a very light brown, pieces of bread, smoked meat, or tongue cut of the same size as the cutlets, and prepared in the same manner, are laid alternately in the dish with them, they should be served without sauce and with a puree of mushrooms or
Spinach in the center of the dish. Cutlets in white fricassee. Cut them in proper shapes, put them in a veal gravy made with the trimmings enough to cover them, season delicately, and let them simmer till quite tender, but not long enough to lose their shape. Fresh button mushrooms and a piece of lemon peel are essential to this dish. When the meat is done remove it, take all fat from the gravy, and thicken it with the yolks of two beaten eggs. Small balls of force meat in which mushrooms must be minced should be poached in the gravy when about to be served. The meat must be returned to the saucepan to be made hot, and when placed in the dish, garnish with thin slices of lemon. Cutlets in brown fricassee. They must be trimmed as above, fried slightly and stewed in beef gravy, and seasoned according to the directions given for a brown fricassee of veal. Balls or fritters are always an improvement to the appearance of this dish. Blanquette of veal. Cut into thin pieces of the size of shillings and half crowns, cold veal or poultry, lay it in a small saucepan with a handful of fresh well cleaned button mushrooms, pour over a little veal gravy, only enough to cover them, with a piece of clarified veal fat about the size of the yolk of a hard boiled egg, flavor with a piece of lemon peel, very little white pepper and salt, one small lump of white sugar, and a little nutmeg, stew all together for 15 minutes, then pour over a sauce. Prepared in a separate saucepan, made with veal gravy, a little lemon juice, but not much, and the beaten yolks of two eggs, let it simmer for an instant and then serve it up in the center of a dish prepared with a wall of mashed potatoes, delicately browned, a few truffles renders this dish more elegant. Minced veal. Cut in small square pieces about the size of dice, cold dressed veal, put it into a saucepan with a little water or gravy, season simply with salt, pepper and grated or minced lemon peel, the mince should be garnished with sippets of toast. Mirotin of veal. Mince finely some cold veal or poultry, add a little grated tongue, or smoked beef, a few crumbs of bread, sweet herbs, pepper, salt, parsley and if approved, essence of lemon, mix all well with two or three eggs, and a very small quantity of good gravy, grease a mold, put in the above ingredients and bake for three quarters of an hour, turn out with care, and serve with mushroom sauce. Frikandels. Prepare cold veal or poultry as in the last receipt, add instead of crumbs of bread, a French roll soaked in white gravy, mix with it the same ingredients, and form it into two shapes to imitate small chickens or sweetbreads, sprinkle with crumbs of bread, and place in a frying pan as deep as a shallow saucepan, when they have fried enough to become set, pour enough weak gravy in the pan to cover the fricandelles, and let them stew in it gently, place them both in the same dish, and pour over. Any well thickened sauce that may be selected. Another sort. Prepare four small pieces of veal to serve in one dish, according to the directions given for fricando of veal, these form a very pretty entree, the pieces of veal should be about the size of pigeons. Smoked veal. Take a fine fat thick breast of veal, bone it, lay it in pickle, according to the receipt to salt meat, hang it for three or four weeks in wood smoke, and it will prove a very fine savory relish, either boiled and eaten cold, or fried as required. Sweet breads roasted. First soak them in warm water, and then blanch them, in whatever manner they are to be dressed, this is essential, they may be prepared in a variety of ways, the simplest is to roast them, for this they have only to be covered with egg and bread crumbs, seasoned with salt and pepper, and finished in a dutch oven or cradle spit, frequently basting with clarified veal suet, they may be served either dry with a puree of vegetables, or with a brown gravy. Sweet bread stewed white. After soaking and blanching, stew them in veal gravy, and season with celery, pepper, salt, nutmeg, a little mace, and a piece of lemon peel, they should be served with a fine white sauce, the gravy in which they are stewed will form the basis for it, with the addition of yolks of eggs and mushroom essence, French cooks would adopt the velouté or bechamel sauce, Jerusalem artichokes cut the size of button mushrooms, are a suitable accompaniment as a garnish. Sweet bread stewed brown. After soaking and blanching, fry them till brown, then simmer gently in beef gravy seasoned highly with smoked meat, nutmeg, pepper, salt, 
a small onion stuck with cloves, and a very little whole allspice, the gravy must be slightly thickened, and morels and truffles are generally added, small balls of delicate force meat are also an improvement. The above receipts are adapted for sweetbreads fricasseed, except that they must be cut in pieces for fricassees, and pieces of meat or poultry are added to them, sweetbreads when dressed whole look better peaks. A delicate receipt for roast mutton. Put the joint in a saucepan, cover it with cold water, let it boil for half an hour, have the spit and fire quite ready, and remove the meat from the saucepan, and place it immediately down to roast, baste it well, dredge it repeatedly with flour, and sprinkle with salt, this mode of roasting mutton removes the strong flavor that is so disagreeable to some tastes. Mutton stewed with celery. Take the best end of a neck of mutton, or a fillet taken from the leg or shoulder, place it in a stew pan with just enough water to cover it, throw in a carrot and turnip, and season, but not too highly, when nearly done remove the meat and strain off the gravy, then return both to the stew pan with force meat balls and some fine celery cut in small pieces, let all stew gently till perfectly done, then stir in the yolks of two eggs, a little flour, and the juice of half a lemon, which must be mixed with a little of the gravy before pouring in the stew pan, and care must be taken to prevent curdling. A simple way of dressing mutton. Take the fillet off a small leg or shoulder of mutton, rub it well over with egg and seasoning, and partly roast it, then place it in a stew pan with a little strong gravy, and stew gently till thoroughly done, this dish is simple, but exceedingly nice, a few balls or fritters to garnish will improve it. Maintain and cutlets. This is merely broiling or frying cutlets in a greased paper, after having spread on them a seasoning prepared as follows, make a paste of bread crumbs, chopped parsley, nutmeg, pepper, salt, grated lemon peel, and thyme, with a couple of beaten eggs, a piquant sauce should be served in a tureen. A haricot. Cut off the best end of a neck of mutton into chops, flour, and partly fry them, then lay them in a stew pan with carrots, sliced turnips cut in small round balls, some button onions, and cover with water, skim frequently, season with pepper and salt to taste, color the gravy with a little browning and a spoonful of mushroom powder. Irish stew. Is the same as above, excepting that the meat is not previously fried, and that potatoes are used instead of turnips and carrots. Mutton a l Hispaniola. Take a small piece of mutton, either part of a shoulder or a fillet of the leg, partly roast it, then put it in a stew pan with beef gravy enough to cover it, previously seasoned with herbs, a carrot, and turnip, cut in quarters three large Spanish onions, and place in the stew pan round the meat, a stuffing will improve it, and care must be taken to free the gravy from every particle of fat. Mutton Collops Take from a fine knuckle a couple of slices, cut, and trim them in collops the size of a teacup, flatten them and spread over each side a force meat for cutlets, and fry them, potato or Jerusalem artichokes cut in slices of the same size and thickness, or pieces of bread cut with a fluted cutter, prepared as the collops and fried, must be placed alternately in the dish with them, they may be served with a pure simple gravy, or very hot and dry on a napkin, garnished with fried parsley and slices of lemon. The knuckle may be used in the following manner, put it on with sufficient water to cover it, season it, and simmer till thoroughly done, thicken the gravy with prepared barley, and flavor it with lemon pickle, or capers, it should be slightly colored with saffron, and celery sauce may be served as an accompaniment, or the mutton may be served on a fine puree of turnips. Mutton Cutlets Have a neck of mutton, cut the bones short, and remove the chine bone completely, cut chops off so thin that every other one shall be without bone, trim them carefully, that all the chops shall bear the same appearance, then flatten them well, cover them with a cutlet preparation, and fry of a delicate brown, a fine puree of any vegetable that may be approved, or any sauce that may be selected, should be served with them, they may be arranged in various ways in the dish, either round the dish, or in a circle in the center, so that the small part of the cutlets shall almost meet, if the latter, the puree should garnish round them instead of being in the center of the dish. Mutton Ham 
Choose a fine leg of mutton, rub it in daily with a mixture of 3 ounces of brown sugar, 2 ounces of common salt, and half an ounce of salt petri, continue this process for a fortnight, then hang it to dry in wood smoke for 10 days longer. Lamb and Sprue Take a fine neck or breast of lamb, put it in stew pan with as much water as will cover it, add to it a bundle of sprue cut in pieces of 2 inches in length, a small head of celery cut small, and one onion, pepper, salt, and a sprig of parsley, let it simmer gently till the meat and sprue are tender, a couple of lumps of sugar improves the flavor, there should not be too much liquor, and all fat must be removed, the sprue should surround the meat when served, and also be thickly laid over it. Lamb and Peas Take the best end of a neck of lamb, either keep it whole or divide it into chops as may be preferred, put it into a saucepan with a little chopped onion, pepper, salt, and a small quantity of water, when half done add half a peck of peas, half a lettuce cut fine, a little mint, and a few lumps of sugar, and let it stew thoroughly, when done, there must not be too much liquor, cutlets of veal or beef are also excellent dressed as above. Although this is a spring dish it may be almost equally well dressed in winter, by substituting small mutton cutlets and preserved peas, which may be met with at any of the best Italian warehouses, a breast or neck of lamb may also be stewed whole in the same manner. Lamb Cutlets with Cucumbers Take two fine cucumbers, peel, and cut them lengthways, lay them in vinegar for an hour, then stew them in good stock till tender, when stir in the yolks of two or three eggs, a little flour and essence of lemon, which must all be first mixed up together with a little of the stock, have ready some cutlets trimmed and fried a light brown, arrange them round the dish and pour the cucumbers in the center. A nice receipt for shoulder of lamb. Half boil it, score it, and squeeze over lemon juice, and cover with grated bread crumbs, egg and parsley, broil it over a clear fire and put it to brown in a Dutch oven or grill, and serve with a sauce seasoned with lemon pickle and chopped mint. A casserite, an East India dish. Take two pounds of lamb chops, or mutton may be substituted, place them in a stew pan, cover with water or gravy, season only with pepper and salt, when the chops are half done, carefully skim off the fat and add two tablespoons full of casserite, stir it in the gravy which should not be thickened, and finish stewing gently till done enough, rice should accompany this dish. Turkey boned and forced. A turkey thus prepared may be either boiled or roasted, there are directions for boning poultry which might be given, but it is always better to let the poulterer do it, when boned it must be filled with a fine force meat, which may be varied in several ways, the basis should be according to the receipt given for veal stuffings, force meats, sausage meat, tongue and mushrooms added as approved. When boiled it is served with any fine white sauce, French cooks use the velouté or bechamel. When roasted, a cradle spit is very convenient, but if there is not one the turkey must be carefully tied to the spit. Fowls boned and forced. The above directions serve also for fowls. A savory way of roasting a fowl. Fill it with a fine seasoning, and just before it is ready for serving, baste it well with clarified veal suet, and sprinkle it thickly with very dry crumbs of bread, repeat this two or three times, then place it in the dish, and serve with a fine brown gravy well flavored with lemon juice, delicate force meat fritters should be also served in the dish. Boiled fowls are served with a fine white sauce, and are often garnished with pieces of white cauliflower, or vegetable marrow, the chief object is to keep them white, it is best to select white-legged poultry for boiling, as they prove whiter when dressed. Amnestic Stew gently one pint of rice in one quart of strong gravy till it begins to swell, then add an onion stuck with cloves, a bunch of sweet herbs, and a chicken stuffed with force meat, let it stew with the rice till thoroughly done, then take it up and stir in the rice, the yolks of four eggs, and the juice of a lemon, serve the fowl in the same dish with the rice, which should be colored to a fine yellow with saffron. Fowl stewed with rice and corsa. Boil a fowl in sufficient water or gravy to cover it, when boiling for 10 minutes, skim off the fat and add half a pound of rice, and one pound of corsa cut in about four pieces, season with a little white pepper, salt, and a pinch of saffron to color it, 
and then stew till the rice is thoroughly tender, there should be no gravy when served, but the rice ought to be perfectly moist. Curried Chicken See Curried Veal Undressed chicken is considered best for a curry, it must be cut in small joints, the directions for curried veal are equally adapted for fowls. A nice method of dressing fowl and sweet bread. Take a fowl and blanch it, also a fine sweet bread, parboil them, then cut off in smooth well-shaped slices, all the white part of the fowl, and slice the sweet bread in similar pieces, place them together in a fine well-flavored veal gravy, when done, serve neatly in the dish, and pour over a fine white sauce, any that may be approved, the remainder of the fowl must be cut up in small joints or pieces, not separated from the bone, and fried to become brown, then place them in a stew pan with force meat balls, truffles, and morels, pour over half or three quarters of a pint of beef gravy, and simmer till finished, a little mushroom ketchup, or lemon pickle may be added, in this manner two very nice entrees may be formed. Blanket of fowl. See blanket of veal. To stew duck with green peas. Stuff and half roast a duck, then put it into a stew pan with an onion sliced, a little mint and about one pint of beef gravy, add after it has simmered half an hour, a quart of green peas, and simmer another half hour, a little lump sugar is requisite. To warm cold poultry. Cut up the pieces required to be dressed, spread over them a seasoning as for cutlets, and fry them, pour over a little good gravy, and garnish with sippets of toast and sliced lemon, or place them in an edging of rice or mashed potatoes. Broiled Fowl and Mushrooms Truss a fine fowl as if for boiling, split it down the back, and broil gently, when nearly done, put it in a stew pan with a good gravy, add a pint of fresh button mushrooms, Season to taste, a little mushroom powder and lemon juice improve the flavor. Pigeons To have a good appearance they should be larded and stuffed, glazing is also an improvement, they form a nice entree, they may be stewed in a strong gravy, when done enough, remove the pigeons, thicken the gravy, add a few force meat and egg balls, and serve in the dish with the pigeons. Or they may be split down the back, broiled, and then finished in the stew pan. Stew giblets. Scald one or more sets of giblets, set them on the fire with a little veal or chicken, or both, in a good gravy, season to taste, thicken the gravy, and color it with browning, flavor with mushroom powder and lemon juice and one glass of white wine, force meat balls should be added a few minutes before serving, and garnish with thin slices of hard boiled eggs. Dutch toast. Take the remains of any cold poultry or meat, mince it and season highly, add to it any cold dressed vegetable, mix it up with one or more eggs, and let it simmer till hot in a little gravy, have ready a square of toast, and serve it on it, squeeze over a little lemon juice, and sprinkle with white pepper. Vegetables prepared in this way are excellent, cauliflower simmered in chicken broth, seasoned delicately and minced on toast, is a nutritive good luncheon for an invalid. Timbal de Macaroni This is a very pretty dish. The macaroni must be boiled in water till it slightly swells, and is soft enough to cut, it must be cut into short pieces about 2 inches in length. Grease a mold, and stick the macaroni closely together all over the mold, when this is done, and which will require some patience, fill up the space with fricassee of chicken, sweetbreads, or whatever may be liked, close the mold carefully, and boil. Rich white sauce is usually served with it, but not poured over the timble, as it would spoil the effect of the honeycomb appearance, which is very pretty. A savory pie for persons of delicate digestion. Cut up fowl and sweet bread, lay in the dish in alternate layers with meat, jelly, and the yolks of hard-boiled eggs without the whites, and flavor with lemon juice, white pepper, and salt, cover with rice prepared as follows, Boil half a pound of rice in sufficient water to permit it to swell, when tender beat it up to a thick paste with the yolk of one or two eggs, season with a little salt, and spread it over the dish thickly. The fowl and sweetbread should have been previously simmered till half done in a little weak broth, the pie must be baked in a gentle oven, and if the rice will not brown sufficiently, finish with a salamander. Descades 
Take the livers of chickens or any other poultry, stew it gently in a little good gravy seasoned with a little onion, mushroom essence, pepper, and salt. When tender, remove the livers, place them on a pasteboard, and mince them, return them to the saucepan, and stir in the yolks of one or two eggs, according to the quantity of liver, until the gravy becomes thick, have a round of toast ready on a hot plate, and serve it on the toast, this is a very nice luncheon or supper dish. Chapter 5 Vegetables and Sundries Directions for Cleaning and Boiling Vegetables Vegetables are extremely nutritious when sufficiently boiled, but are unwholesome and indigestible when not thoroughly dressed, still they should not be overboiled, or they will lose their flavor. Vegetables should be shaken to get out any insects, and laid in water with a little salt. Soft water is best suited for boiling vegetables, and they require plenty of water, a little salt should be put in the saucepan with them, and the water should almost invariably be boiling when they are put in. Potatoes are much better when steamed. Peas and several other vegetables are also improved by this mode of cooking them, although it is seldom adopted in England. Mashed Potatoes Boil till perfectly tender, let them be quite dry, and press them through a colander or mash and beat them well with a fork, add a piece of butter and milk or cream, and continue beating till they are perfectly smooth, return them to the saucepan to warm, or they may be browned before the fire. The chief art is to beat them sufficiently long, which renders them light. Potato balls are mashed potatoes formed into balls glazed with the yolk of egg, and browned with a salamander. Potato wall, or edging. Raise a wall of finely mashed potatoes, of two or three inches high, round the dish, form it with a spoon to the shape required, brush it over with egg, and put it in the oven to become hot and brown, if it does not brown nicely, use the salamander. Rice is arranged the same way to edge curries or fricassees, it must be first boiled till tender. Potato shavings. Take four fine large potatoes, and having peeled them, continue to cut them up as if peeling them in ribbons of equal width, then throw the shavings into a frying pan, and fry of a fine brown, they must be constantly moved with a silver fork to keep the pieces separate. They should be laid on a cloth to drain, and placed in the dish lightly. The French way of dressing spinach. Wash and boil till tender, then squeeze and strain it, press it in a towel till almost dry, put it on a board, and chop it as finely as possible, then return it to the saucepan with butter, pepper and salt, stir it all the time, and let it boil fast. Stewed spinach. Scald and chop some spinach small, cut up an onion, add pepper and salt and brown sugar, with a little vinegar, stew all together gently, serve with poached eggs or small force meat fritters. This forms a pretty side dish, and is also a nice way of dressing spinach to serve in the same dish with cutlets. To stew Spanish beans and peas. Soak the beans overnight in cold water, they must be stewed in only sufficient water to cover them, with two tablespoons full of oil, a little pepper and salt, and white sugar. When done they should be perfectly soft and tender. Peas stewed with oil. Put half a peck of peas into a stew pan, half a lettuce chopped small, a little mint, a small onion cut up, two tablespoons full of oil, and a dessert spoonful of powdered sugar, with water sufficient to cover the peas, watching, from time to time, that they do not become too dry, let them stew gently, taking care that they do not burn, till perfectly soft. When done they should look of a yellowish brown. French beans, broccoli, and greens, stewed in the above manner will be found excellent. Cucumber Mango Cut a large cucumber in half, lengthways, scoop out the seedy part, and lay it in vinegar that has been boiled with mustard seed, a little garlic, and spices, for 24 hours, then fill the cucumber with highly seasoned force meat, and stew it in a rich gravy, the cucumber must be tied to keep it together. Cabbage and Rice Scald till tender a fine summer white cabbage, then chop it up small, and put it into a stew pan, with a large cup of rice, also previously scalded, add a little water, a large piece of butter, salt, and pepper, let it stew gently till thoroughly done, 
stirring from time to time, and adding water and butter to prevent its getting too thick, there should be no gravy in the dish when served. Palestine Salad Take a dozen fine Jerusalem artichokes, boil till tender, let the water strain off, and when cold cut them in quarters, and pour over a fine salad mixture, the artichokes should lay in the sauce half an hour before serving. This salad is a very refreshing one, and has the advantage of being extremely wholesome. A Spring Dish Take one quart of young peas, a little mint, a few lumps of sugar, a little salt and white pepper, simmer them gently in one pint of water, when the peas are half done, throw in small dumplings made of paste, as if for short crust, and sweetened with a little brown sugar, beat up two eggs, and drop in a spoonful at a time, just before serving, it will require a deep dish, as the liquor is not to be strained off. Some prefer the eggs poached. Carrots o' butter. Boil them enough to be perfectly tender, then cut them in quarters, and again in lengths of three inches, drain them from the water, and put to them a piece of butter, salt, and pepper, and simmer them for a few minutes without boiling, a large piece of butter must be used. French beans are good dressed in the same way. Puree of vegetables. Take any vegetable that may be approved, boil till well done, drain away all water, reduce the vegetable to a pulp, and add to it any fine sauce, to make it of the consistency of a very thick custard. Jerusalem artichokes fried. Cut in slices after parboiling them, dip in batter, and fry. Stewed red cabbage. Clean and remove the outer leaves, slice it as thinly as possible, put it in a saucepan with a large piece of butter, and a teacup full of water, salt, and pepper, let it stew slowly till very tender. Mushrooms au naturel. Clean some fine fresh mushrooms, put them in a saucepan with a large piece of butter, pepper, and salt, let them simmer until tender, and serve them with no other sauce than that in which they have been dressed. Also stewed in a veal gravy, and served with white sauce on a toast, they form a nice and pretty dish. The large flap mushrooms may be stewed in gravy, or simply broiled, seasoned with cayenne pepper, salt, and lemon juice. Dry tomato soup. Brown a couple of onions in a little oil, about two tablespoons full or more, according to the number of tomatoes, when hot, add about six tomatoes cut and peeled, season with cayenne pepper and salt, and let the whole simmer for a short time, then cut thin slices of bread, and put as much with the tomatoes as will bring them to the consistency of a pudding, it must be well beaten up, stir in the yolks of two or three eggs, and two ounces of butter warmed, turn the whole into a deep dish and bake. It very brown. Crumbs of bread should be strewed over the top, and a little warmed butter poured over. Deviled Biscuits Butter some biscuits on both sides, and pepper them well, make a paste of either chopped anchovies, or fine cheese, and spread it on the biscuit, with mustard and cayenne pepper, and grill them. Savory Eggs Boil some eggs hard, put them into cold water, cut them into halves, take out the yolks, beat them up in a mortar with grated hung beef, fill the halves with this mixture, fry lightly, and serve with brown gravy. Savory Cheesecakes Grate finely an equal quantity of stale bread and good cheese, season with a little pepper and salt, mix into a batter with eggs, form into thin cakes and fry. Scalloped Eggs Poach lightly three or four eggs, place them in a dish, pour upon them a little warm butter, sprinkle with pepper, salt, and nutmeg, strew over with crumbs of bread, and brown before the fire. Macaroni and Cheese Boil some macaroni in milk or water until tender, then drain them and place on a dish with bits of butter and grated parmesan cheese, when the dish is filled grate more cheese over it and brown before the fire. A fine receipt for a savory omelet. Break four eggs, beat them up till thin enough to pass through a hair sieve, then beat them up till perfectly smooth and thin, a small omelet frying pan is necessary for cooking it well. Dissolve in it a piece of butter, about an ounce and a half, pour in the egg, and as soon as it rises and is firm, slide it onto a warm plate and fold it over, it should only be fried on one side, 
and finely minced herbs should be sprinkled over the unfried side with pepper and salt. A salamander is frequently held over the unfried side of the omelette to take off the rawness it may otherwise have. Corusa omelette. Add to the eggs, after they are well beaten as directed in the last receipt, half a teacupful of finely minced corusa, this omelette must be lightly fried on both sides, or the salamander held over long enough to dress the corusa. Ramekins. Mix together three eggs, one ounce of warmed butter, and two of fine cheese grated, and bake in small patty pans. Rissoles. Make a fine force meat of any cold meat, poultry, or fish, enclose it in a very rich puff paste, rolled out extremely thin. They may be made into balls or small triangular turnovers, or into long narrow ribbons, the edges must be pressed together, that they may not burst in frying. They form a pretty dish. Croquettes. Pound any cold poultry, meat, or fish, make it into a delicate force meat, the flavor can be varied according to taste, minced mushrooms, herbs, parsley, grated lemon peel, are suitable for poultry and veal, minced anchovies should be used instead of mushrooms when the croquettes are made of fish. Form the mixture into balls or oval shapes the size of small eggs, dip them into beaten eggs, thickly sprinkle with bread crumbs or pounded vermicelli, and fry of a handsome brown. Casserole au riz. Boil some rice till quite tender, make it into a firm paste with one egg and a couple of tablespoons of strong gravy, then line the inside of a mold with a paste of sufficient thickness to turn out without breaking. Some cooks fill the mold instead of lining it only, and scoop away the center. After it is turned out the rice must stand till cold, before it is removed from the mold, then fill the rice with fricassee of fowl and sweet bread, with a rich white sauce, and place it in the oven to become hot and brown. The mold used for a casserole is oval and fluted, and resembles a cake mold. It is as well to observe, it cannot be made in a jelly mold. A fondue. Make into a batter one ounce and a half of potato flour, with the same quantity of grated cheese and of butter, and a quarter of a pint of milk or cream, add a little salt, very little pepper, and the well-beaten yolks of four fine fresh eggs, when all this is well mixed together, pour in the whites of the eggs, well whisked to a froth, pour the mixture into a deep soup plate or dish, used expressly for the purpose, and bake in a moderate oven. The dish should be only half filled with the fondue, as it will rise very high. It must be served the moment it is ready, or it will fall. It is a good plan to hold a salamander over it while being brought to table. Petty's Fondos Make a batter as for a fondue, but use rice flour or arrowroot instead of potato flour, add the egg in the same manner as for a fondue, and pour the mixture into small paper trays fringed round the top. The mixture should only half fill the trays or cases. Chapter 6 Pastry Directions for making paste To make good light paste requires much practice, as it is not only from the proportions, but from the manner of mixing the various ingredients, that paste acquires its good or bad qualities. Paste should be worked up very lightly, and no strength or pressure used, it should be rolled out from you, as lightly as possible. A marble slab is better than a board to make paste on. The flour should be dried for some time before the fire previously to being used. In forming it into paste it should be wetted as little as possible, to prevent its being tough. It is a great mistake to imagine lard is better adapted for pastry than butter or clarified fat, it may make the paste lighter, but neither the color nor the flavor will be nearly so good, and the saving is extremely trifling. To ensure lightness, paste should be set in the oven directly it is made. Puff paste requires a brisk oven. Butter should be added to the paste in small pieces. The more times the paste is folded and rolled, if done with a light hand and the butter added with skill, the richer and lighter it will prove. It is no longer customary to line the dish for pies and fruit tarts. Plain puff paste. Mix a pound of flour into a stiff paste with a little water, first having rubbed into it about 2 ounces of butter, then roll it out, add by degrees the remainder of the butter, there should be altogether half a pound of butter, fold the paste and roll about 2 or 3 times. 
very rich puff paste. Mix in the same manner equal quantities of butter and flour, taking care to have the flour dried for a short time before the fire, it may be folded and rolled 5 or 6 times. This paste is well suited to volovents and tartlets, an egg well beaten and mixed with the paste is sometimes added. Plain short crust. Put half a pound of fresh butter to a pound of flour, add the yolks of two eggs and a little powdered sugar, mix into a paste with water, and roll out once. Egg paste, called in modern cookery nuis. This is formed by making a paste of flour and beaten eggs, without either butter or water, it must be rolled out extremely thin and left to dry, it may then be cut into narrow strips or stamped with paste cutters. It is more fashionable in soups than vermicelli. Beef dripping paste. Mix half a pound of clarified dripping into one pound of flour, work it into a paste with water, and roll out twice. This is a good paste for a common meat pie. Glaze for pastry. When the pastry is nearly baked, brush it over with white of egg, cover it thickly with sifted sugar, and brown it in the oven, or it may be browned with a salamander. For savory pies beat the yolk of an egg, dip a paste brush into it, and lay it on the crust before baking. Fruit tarts or pies. A fruit tart is so common a sweet that it is scarcely necessary to give any directions concerning it. Acid fruits are best stewed before putting into a pie, the usual proportions are half a pound of sugar to a quart of fruit not quite so much if the fruit is ripe, the fruit should be laid high in the middle of the dish, to make the pie a good shape. It is the fashion to lay over the crust, when nearly baked, an icing of the whites of eggs whisked with sugar, the tart or pie is then replaced in the oven. A very fine savory pie. Lay a fine veal cutlet, cut in pieces and seasoned, at the bottom of the dish, lay over it a layer of smoked beef fat, then a layer of fine cold jelly made from gravy beef and veal, then hard boiled eggs in slices, then chicken or sweet bread, and then again the jelly, and so until the dish is filled, put no water, and season highly with lemon juice, essence of mushroom, pepper, salt, and nutmeg, also, if approved, a blade of mace, small cakes of fine force meat are an improvement, cover with a fine puff paste, and brush over with egg, and bake. Tartlets. Make a very rich light puff paste, and roll it out to half an inch of thickness, it should be cut with fluted paste cutters, lightly baked, and the center scooped out afterwards, and the sweet meat or jam inserted, a pretty dish of pastry may be made by cutting the paste in ribbons of 3 inches in length, and one and a half in width, bake them lightly, and pile them one upon another, with jam between each, in the form of a cone. Cheesecakes. Warm 4 ounces of butter, mix it with the same quantity of loaf sugar sifted, grate in the rind of 3 lemons, squeeze in the juice of 1, add 3 well beaten eggs, a little nutmeg, and a spoonful of brandy, put this mixture into small tins lined with a light puff paste, and bake. Cheesecakes can be varied by putting almonds beaten instead of the lemon, or by substituting Seville oranges, and adding a few slices of candied orange and lemon peel. Giblet Pie Prepare the giblets as for stewed giblets they should then be laid in a deep dish, covered with a puff paste, and baked. Molina Pie Mince finely cold veal or chicken, with smoked beef or tongue, season well, add lemon juice and a little nutmeg, let it simmer in a small quantity of good beef or veal gravy, while on the fire, stir in the yolks of four eggs, put it in a dish to cool, and then cover with a rich pastry, and bake it. Volo Vent This requires the greatest lightness in the pastry, as all depends upon its rising when baked, it should be rolled out about an inch and a half in thickness, cut it with a fluted tin of the size of the dish in which it is to be served. Also cut a smaller piece, which must be rolled out considerably thinner than an inch, to serve as a lid for the other part, bake both pieces, and when done, scoop out the crumb of the largest, and fill it with a white fricassee of chicken, sweet bread, or whatever may be selected, the sauce should be well thickened, or it would soften, and run through the crust. A volovent of fruit. It is now the fashion to fill volovents with fruits richly stewed with sugar until the syrup is almost a jelly, it forms a very pretty entremet. 
Petty's Volovants. These are made in the same way, but cut in small rounds, the crumb of the larger is scooped out, and the hollow filled with any of the varieties of patty preparations or preserved fruits. Mince Pies. Grease and line tin patty pans with a fine puff paste rolled out thin, fill them with mince meat, cover them with another piece of paste, moisten the edges, close them carefully, cut them evenly round, and bake them about half an hour in a well heated oven. Patty Meats. May be prepared from any dressed materials, such as cold dressed veal, beef, and mutton, poultry, sweetbreads, and fish, the chief art is to mince them properly, and give them the appropriate flavor and sauce, for veal, sweetbreads, and poultry, which may be used together or separately, the usual seasonings are mace, nutmeg, white pepper, salt, mushrooms minced, or in powder, lemon peel, and sometimes the juice also, the mince is warmed in a small quantity of white sauce, not too thin, and the patty crusts, when ready baked, are filled with it. For beef and mutton the seasonings are salt, pepper, allspice, a few sweet herbs powdered, with the addition, if approved, of a little ketchup, the mince must be warmed in strong well-thickened beef gravy. If the mince is of fish, season with anchovy sauce, nutmeg, lemon peel, pepper and salt, warm it, in a sauce prepared with butter, flour and milk or cream, work together smoothly and stir till it thickens, the mince is then simmered in it for a few minutes, till hot, the seasonings may be put with the sauces, instead of with the mince. Chapter 7 Sweet Dishes, Puddings, Cakes, and See General Remarks the freshness of all ingredients for puddings is of great importance. Dried fruits should be carefully picked, and sometimes washed and should then be dried. Rice, sago, and all kinds of seeds should be soaked and well washed before they are mixed into puddings. Half an hour should be allowed for boiling a bread pudding in a half pint basin, and so on in proportion. All puddings of the custard kind require gentle boiling, and when baked must be set in a moderate oven. By whisking to a solid froth the whites of the eggs used for any pudding, and stirring them into it at the moment of placing it in the oven, it will become exceedingly light and rise high in the dish. All baked puddings should be baked in tin molds in the form of a deep pie dish, but slightly fluted, it should be well greased by pouring into it a little warmed butter, and then turned upside down for a second, to drain away the superfluous butter, then sprinkle, equally all over, sifted white sugar, or dried crumbs of bread, then pour the pudding mixture into the mold, it should, when served, be turned out of the mold, when it will look rich and brown, and have the appearance of a cake. To ensure the lightness of cakes, it is necessary to have all the ingredients placed for an hour or more before the fire, that they may all be warm and of equal temperature, without this precaution, cakes will be heavy even when the best ingredients are employed. Great care and experience are required in the management of the oven, to ascertain when a cake is sufficiently baked, plunge a knife into it, draw it instantly away, when, if the blade is sticky, return the cake to the oven, if, on the contrary, it appears unsoiled the cake is ready. The lightness of cakes depends upon the ingredients being beaten well together. All stiff cakes may be beaten with the hand, but pound cakes, sponge, and see should be beaten with a whisk or spoon. Bola de Amor The recipe for this much celebrated and exquisite confection is simpler than may be supposed from its elaborate appearance, it requires chiefly care, precision, and attention. Clarify 2 pounds of white sugar, to ascertain when it is of a proper consistency, drop a spoonful in cold water, form it into a ball, and try if it sounds when struck against a glass, when it is thus tested, Take the yolks of 20 eggs, mix them up gently and pass them through a sieve, then have ready a funnel, the whole of which must be about the size of vermicelli, hold the funnel over the sugar, while it is boiling over a charcoal fire, pour the eggs through, stirring the sugar all the time, and taking care to hold the funnel at such a distance from the sugar, as to admit of the egg dropping into it. When the egg has been a few minutes in the sugar, it will be hard enough to take out with a silver fork, and must then be placed on a drainer, 
continue adding egg to the boiling sugar till enough is obtained, there should be previously prepared 1 pound of sweet almonds, finely pounded and boiled in sugar, clarified with orange flower water only, place in a dish a layer of this paste, over which spread a layer of citron cut in thin slices, and then a thick layer of the egg prepared as above. Continue working thus in alternate layers till high enough to look handsome. It should be piled in the form of a cone, and the egg should form the last layer. It must then be placed in a gentle oven till it becomes a little set, and the last layer slightly crisp, a few minutes will affect this. It must be served in the dish in which it is baked, and is generally ornamented with myrtle and gold and silver leaf. Bola Taglietto Take one pound of butter, and warm it over the fire with a little milk, then put it into a pan with one pound of flour, six beaten eggs, a quarter of a pound of beaten sweet almonds, and two tablespoons full of yeast, make these ingredients into a light paste, and set it before the fire to rise, then grease a deep dish, and place in a layer of the paste, then some egg prepared as for bola di amor, then slices of citron, and a layer of egg marmalade, sprinkle each layer with cinnamon, and fill the dish with alternate layers. A rich puff paste should line the dish, which ought to be deep, bake in a brisk oven, after which, sugar clarified with orange flower water must be poured over till the syrup has thoroughly penetrated the bola. A bola di hispaniola. Take one pound and a half of flour, with three spoonsful of yeast, two ounces of fresh butter, one tablespoonful of essence of lemon, eight eggs, and half a teacupful of water, and make it into a light dough, set it to rise for about an hour, then roll it out and cut it into three pieces, have previously ready, a quarter of a pound of citron, and three quarters of a pound of orange and lemon peel, cut in thin slices, mixed with powdered sugar and cinnamon, the bola should be formed with the pieces of dough, layers of the fruit being placed between, it should not be baked in a tin. Powdered sweet almonds and sugar, should be strewed over it before baking. Superior receipt for almond pudding. Beat up the yolks of 10 eggs, and the whites of 7, add half a pound of sweet almonds pounded finely, half a pound of white sugar, half an ounce of bitter almonds, and a tablespoonful of orange flour water, when thoroughly mixed, grease a dish, put in the pudding and bake in a brisk oven, when done, strew powdered sugar over the top, or, which is exceedingly fine, pour over clarified sugar with orange flower water. German or Spanish Puffs Put a quarter of a pound of fresh butter, and a teacup full of cold water into a saucepan, when the butter is melted, stir in, while on the fire, four tablespoons full of flour, when thoroughly mixed, put it in a dish to cool, and then add four well-beaten eggs, butter some cups, half fill them with the batter, bake in a quick oven and serve with clarified sugar. A Luxion, or a Rachel. Make a thin nuis paste, cut into strips of about two inches wide, leave it to dry, then boil the strips in a little water, and drain through a colander, when the water is strained off, mix it with beaten eggs, white sugar, a little fresh butter, and grated lemon peel, bake or boil in a shape lined with preserved cherries, when turned out pour over a fine custard, or cream, flavored with brandy, and sweetened to taste. Prenuses. Take one pint of milk, stir in as much flour as will bring it to the consistency of hasty pudding, boil it till it becomes thick, let it cool, and beat it up with ten eggs, when smooth, take a spoonful at a time, and drop it into a frying pan, in which there is a good quantity of boiling clarified butter, fry of a light brown, and serve with clarified sugar, flavored with lemon essence. SOPA Doro, or Golden Soup Clarify a pound of sugar in a quarter of a pint of water, and the same quantity of orange flour water, cut into pieces the size of dice a thin slice of toasted bread, or cut it into shapes with a paste cutter, throw it, while hot, into the sugar, with an ounce of sweet almonds pounded very finely, then take the beaten yolks of four eggs. Pour over the sugar and bread, stir gently, and let it simmer a few minutes. Serve in a deep glass dish, sprinkled over with pounded cinnamon. Pomes Frites This is a simple but very nice way of preparing apples. 
Peel and cut five fine apples in half, dip them in egg and white powdered sugar, and fry in butter, when done, strew a little white sugar over them. Sure to do's. Clarify a pound of sugar in half a pint of water, peel and grate a moderately sized coconut, add it to the syrup, and let it simmer till perfectly soft, putting rose water occasionally to prevent its becoming too dry, stir it continually to prevent burning. Let it cool, and mix it with the beaten yolks of six eggs, make a thin nuis pastry, cut it into rounds of the size of a teacup, pinch up the edges deep enough to form a shape, fill them with the sweet meat, and bake of a light brown. A rich puff paste may be substituted for the nuis pastry if preferred. Coconut doce. This is merely the coconut and sugar prepared as above, without egg, and served in small glasses, or baked. Coconut pudding. Take about half a pound of finely grated coconut, beat up to a cream half a pound of fresh butter, add it to the coconut, with half a pound of white sugar, and six whites of eggs beaten to a froth, mix the whole well together, and bake in a dish lined with a rich puff paste. Egg Marmalade Clarify one pound of sugar in half a pint of water till it becomes a thick syrup. While clarifying, add one ounce of sweet almonds blanched and pounded, let it cool, and stir in gently the yolks of twenty eggs which have been previously beaten and passed through a sieve, great care must be taken to stir it continually the same way, when well mixed, place it over a slow fire till it thickens, stirring all the time to prevent burning. Some cooks add vanilla, considering the flavor an improvement. Macrides. Take one pound of French roll dough, six ounces of fresh butter, two eggs, and as much flour as will be requisite to knead it together, roll in into the form of a long French roll, and cut it in thin round slices, set them at a short distance from the fire to rise, and then fry in the best Florence oil, when nearly cold, dip them in clarified sugar, flavored with essence of lemon. Tart de Moy Soak three quarters of a pound of Savoy biscuits in a quart of milk, add six ounces of fresh butter, four eggs, one ounce of candied orange peel, the same quantity of lemon peel, and one ounce of citron, mix all well together, sweeten with white sugar, and bake in a quick oven, when nearly done, Spread over the top the whites of the eggs well whisked, and return it to the oven. Grim stick. Make into a stiff paste one pint of biscuit powder, a little brown sugar, grated lemon peel, six eggs, and three quarters of a pound of warmed fresh butter, then prepare four apples chopped finely, a quarter of a pound of sweet almonds blanched and chopped, half a pound of stoned raisins, a little nutmeg grated, half a pound of coarse brown sugar, and a glass of white wine, or a little brandy, mix the above ingredients together, and put them on a slow fire to simmer for half an hour, and place. In a dish to cool, make the paste into the form of small dumplings, fill them with the fruit, and bake them, when put in the oven, pour over a syrup of brown sugar and water, flavored with lemon juice. French Roll Fritters Take off the crust of a long round French roll, Cut the crumb in thin slices, soak them in boiling milk, taking care they do not break, have a dish ready with several eggs beaten up, and with a fish slice remove the bread from the milk, letting the milk drain off, dip them into the dish of eggs, and half fry them in fine salad oil, they must then be again soaked in the milk and dip the egg, and then fried of a handsome light brown, while hot, pour over clarified sugar, flavored with cinnamon. And orange flower water. Heyman's Fritters. Take two spoonful of the best Florence oil, scald it, and when hot, mix with it one pound of flour, add four beaten eggs and make it into a paste, roll it out thin and cut it into pieces about four inches square, let them dry and fry them in oil, the moment the pieces are put in the frying pan, they must be drawn up with two silver skewers into different forms according to fancy, a few minutes is sufficient to fry them, they should be crisp when done. Wafflers. Mix a cup and a half of thick yeast with a little warm milk, and set it with two pounds of flour before the fire to rise, then mix with them one pound of fresh butter, ten eggs, a grated nutmeg, a quarter of a pint of orange flour water, a little powdered cinnamon, and three pints of warm milk, when the batter is perfectly smooth, 
butter the irons, fill them with it, close them down tightly, and put them between the bars of a bright clear fire, when sufficiently done, they will slip easily out. Of the irons. Waffler irons are required and can be obtained at any good ironmongers of the Hebrew persuasion. Lamplich. Take half a pound of currants, the same quantity of raisins and sugar, a little citron, ground cloves and cinnamon, with eight apples finely chopped, mix all together, then have ready a rich puff paste cut into small triangles, fill them with the fruit like puffs, and lay them in a deep dish, let the pieces be placed closely, and when the dish is full, pour over one ounce of fresh butter melted in a teacup full of clarified sugar, flavored with essence of lemon, and bake in an oven not too brisk. Staffin. This is composed of the fruit, and see, prepared as above, but the dish is lined with the paste, and the fruit laid in alternate layers with paste till the dish is filled, the paste must form the top layer, clarified sugar is poured over before it is put into the oven. Rice fritters. Boil half a pound of rice, in a small quantity of water, to a jelly, let it cool, and beat it up with six eggs, three spoonsful of flour, a little grated lemon peel, fry like fritters, either in butter or oil, and serve with white sugar sifted over them. Lemon tart. Grate the peel of six lemons, add the juice of one, with a quarter of a pound of pounded almonds, a quarter of a pound of preserved lemon and orange peel, half a pound of powdered white sugar, and six eggs well beaten, mix all together, and bake in a dish lined with a fine pastry. Another way. Slice six lemons and lay them in sugar all night, then mix with them two Savoy biscuits, three ounces of orange and lemon peel, three ounces of ground almonds, one ounce of whole almonds blanched, and bake in a dish lined with pastry. Orange tarts are prepared in the same way, substituting oranges for the lemons. Almond rice. Boil half a pound of whole rice in milk until soft, beat it through a sieve, set it on the fire, with sugar according to taste, a few pounded sweet almonds and a few slices of citron, when it has simmered a short time, let it cool, place it in a mold, and when sufficiently firm turn it out, stick it with blanched almonds, and pour over a fine custard. This may be made without milk, and by increasing the quantity of almonds will be found exceedingly good. Almond paste. Blanch half a pound of fine almonds, pound them to a paste, a few drops of water are necessary to be added, from time to time, or they become oily, then mix thoroughly with it half a pound of white sifted sugar, put it into a preserving pan, and let them simmer very gently until they become dry enough not to stick to a clean spoon when touched, it must be constantly stirred. Rice Fruit Tarts For persons who dislike pastry, the following is an excellent way of preparing fruit. Boil in milk some whole rice till perfectly soft, sweeten with white sugar, and when nearly cold, line a dish with it, have ready some currants, raspberries, cherries, or any other fruit, which must have been previously stewed and sweetened, fill the dish with it, beat up the whites of three eggs to a froth, mixed with a little white sugar, and lay over the top, and place it in the oven for half an hour. Bread Fruit Tarts Line a dish with thin slices of bread, then lay the fruit with brown sugar in alternate layers, with slices of bread, when the dish is filled, pour over half a teacup full of water, and let the top be formed of thin pieces of bread thickly strewed over with brown sugar, bake until thoroughly done. Rice Custard This is a very innocent and nutritive custard. Take two ounces of whole rice and boil it in three pints of milk until it thickens, then add half a pound of pounded sweet almonds, and sweeten to taste. A stick of cinnamon and a piece of lemon peel should be boiled in it, and then taken out. Cream Brun Boil a large cup of cream, flavor with essence of almonds and cinnamon, and then mix with it the yolk of three eggs, carefully beaten and strained, stirring one way to keep it smooth, place it on a dish in small heaps, strew over powdered sugar and beaten almonds, and brown with a salamander. Pancakes Mix a light batter of eggs with flour and milk or water, fry in boiling butter or clarified suet, they may be fried without butter or fat, by putting more eggs and a little cream, the pan must be very dry and clean, 
those fried without butter are very delicate and fashionable, they should be fried of the very lightest color, they are good also made of rice, which must be boiled in milk till quite tender, then beat up with eggs, and flavored according to taste, and fried like other pancakes. Pancakes for children. Take a pint of finely grated bread crumbs, simmer in a little milk and water, flavor with cinnamon or lemon peel grated, add a couple of beaten eggs, and sweeten to taste, drop a small quantity into the pan and fry like pancakes. A nice rice pudding for children. Boil till tender half a pound of well picked rice in one quart of fresh milk, sweeten with white sugar, and flavor with whole cinnamon, lemon peel, and a bay leaf, when the rice is tender, Place it in a deep dish, pour over a very little butter warmed in a little milk, and bake until brown. A slow oven is requisite unless the rice is extremely soft before it is put in the oven. A rich bread and butter pudding. Lay in a deep dish alternate layers of bread and butter cut from a French roll, and the following mixture, the yolks of four eggs beaten, four ounces of moist sugar, a few soaked ratafias, a tablespoonful of brandy and a few currants, Fill up the dish with these layers, and pour over a little milk, the last layer should be of bread and butter, the whites of the eggs beaten to a froth may, if an elegant appearance is wished for, be laid over the top when the pudding is nearly baked. A Cherry Batter Pudding Stone and pick some fine cherries, put them into a buttered mold, and pour over them a fine batter well sweetened, tie over the mold closely, and boil one hour and a half, serve with sweet sauce. This is a delicious pudding, plums or damsons are sometimes used instead of cherries. Cumberland Pudding Take equal quantities of bread crumbs, apples finely chopped, currants and shred suet, sweeten with brown sugar, and mix all together with three eggs, a little brandy, grated nutmeg, and lemon peel, boil in a round mold from one to two hours, according to the size of the pudding. College Pudding these are made in a similar way to Cumberland pudding, with the omission of the apples, they are made in balls, and fried or baked in cups. A sweet sauce is served with them. Plum pudding. To one pound of currants add one pound of raisins, one pound of shred suet, one pound flour, or half a pound bread crumbs and half a pound of flour, a quarter of a pound of candied orange and lemon peel, a little citron cut thin, half a pound of moist sugar, Mix all well together as each article is added, then stir in six beaten eggs and a glass of brandy, beat the pudding well for half an hour, let it stand some time, then put it into a basin and boil six or seven hours in plenty of water, it should be seasoned according to taste with ginger, nutmeg, cloves, and sea serve with sifted sugar or whites of eggs beaten to a froth. Ratafia Pudding Soak the crumb of a French roll and half a pound of ratafia cakes in milk or cream, then mix with them three ounces of warmed fresh butter, the yolks of five and the whites of two eggs, sweeten to taste, add one ounce of pounded almonds, and a few bitter almonds, boil in a shape lined with dry cherries, or bake in a cake tin first well buttered, and sprinkled with bread crumbs. Passover Pudding Mix equal quantities of biscuit powder and shred suet, half the quantity of currants and raisins, a little spice and sugar, with an ounce of candied peels, and fine well-beaten eggs, make these into a stiff batter, and boil well, and serve with a sweet sauce. This pudding is excellent baked in a pudding tin, it must be turned out when served. Another sort. Mix the various ingredients above named, substituting for the raisins, apples minced finely, add a larger proportion of sugar, and either boil or bake. Another sort. Mix into a batter a cup full of biscuit powder, with a little milk and a couple of eggs, to which add three ounces of sugar, two of warmed butter, a little shred of lemon peel, and a tablespoonful of rum, pour the mixture into a mold, and boil or bake. Passover fritters. Mix into a smooth batter a teacup of biscuit powder with beaten eggs, and sweeten with white sifted sugar, Add grated lemon peel, and a spoonful of orange flower water, and fry of a light brown. The flavor may be varied by substituting a few beaten almonds, with one or two bitter, instead of the orange flower water. A superior receipt for Passover fritters. Make a thin batter as already described in the former receipt, 
drop it into a sootful pan, fry lightly, and strew over pounded cinnamon, sifted sugar, and finely chopped almonds, hold over a salamander to brown the upper side. Slide the fritter onto a hot dish, and fold, pour over, when in the dish, clarified sugar. Pass over current fritters. Mix a thick batter, as before, add some well washed and dried currants, and fry of a rich brown, serve with a sweet sauce, flavored with wine or shrub, and sweetened with moist sugar, these are often made in the shape of small balls, and fried and served in the same sauce. Batter Pudding Stir in 3 ounces of flour, 4 beaten eggs, and 1 pint of milk, sweeten to taste, and mix to a smooth batter about the thickness of good cream, and boil in a buttered basin. Custard Pudding To 1 desert spoonful of flour, add 1 pint of fresh milk and the yolks of 5 eggs, flavor according to fancy, with sugar, nutmeg, or lemon peel, beat to a froth 2 whites of eggs and pour to the rest, boil rather more than half an hour. Bread Pudding Great stale bread, or soak the crumb of a French roll in milk, which must be warmed, beat with it 2 or 3 eggs, flavor and sweeten to taste, sometimes with a little wine or essence of lemon, or beaten almonds, it will require to be boiled about half an hour. This pudding is excellent made as above, with the addition of the peel of one whole lemon grated, with its juice, and baked. Vermicelli and Macaroni Pudding Boil till tender 4 ounces of either of the above articles, in a pint of milk, flavor as directed in the preceding receipt, and boil in a mold, which may be lined with raisins. It should be served with any sweet pudding sauce. Millet, arrowroot, ground rice, rice, tapioca, and sago puddings. Puddings of this sort are so similar and simple, that it is only necessary to give one receipt, which will serve as a guide for all, they are all made with milk, all require to be thoroughly done, all require to be mixed with eggs and sweetened with sugar, and are good either boiled or baked. The cook must use her judgment in adopting the quantities to the size of the pudding required, and the taste of the family she serves. Minced Meat Take 1 pound of tender roasted meat, 2 pounds of shred suet, 3 pounds of currants, 6 chopped apples, a quarter of a loaf grated, nutmegs, cloves, pepper, salt, 1 pound of sugar, grated lemon and orange peel, lemon juice, and 2 wine glasses of brandy, the same of white wine, and 2 ounces of citron, and the same of candied lemon peel, mix all well together, the ingredients ought to be added separately. Minced meat should be kept a day or two before using. The same proportions, as above, without meat, will be very good, a little port wine is sometimes substituted for the brandy. Baked suet pudding. Mix 1 pint of water, 6 ounces of flour, 3 of shred suet, and 2 or 3 beaten eggs, sweetened to taste. Add raisins or currants if approved, and bake in a brick oven. Yorkshire pudding. Mix into a smooth batter half a pound of flour, 4 eggs, if intended to be rich, otherwise 2, a pint of milk, and a little salt, it should be about an inch thick, it can be made with or without milk by using a greater proportion of eggs, but it is not so good. Gatto de Tours Take a pound cake, cut it in slices about half an inch in thickness, spread each slice with jam or preserve, then replace them to the original form, cover the cake with whites of eggs and sugar, whisk to a froth, and set it in a cool oven to dry. Jawmange Simmer half a pound of white sugar in three quarters of a pint of water, with the thinly cut peel of two lemons, when the sugar is melted, add an ounce of dissolved isinglass, and the juice of three lemons, a glass of brandy and three of sherry, beat up with this the yolks of five or six eggs. Place the basin in which it is mixed into a pan of boiling water to thicken it, then pour it into a mold and set it to cool, if it does not thicken by being put in a pan of boiling water, set the pan on the fire and stir it for a few minutes. Gatto de Pomme Take 10 or 12 fine baking apples, peel, and take out the cores, and let them simmer in milk and water, when soft drain them, and beat them up with a wooden fork, with half an ounce of dissolved isinglass, white sifted sugar, sufficient to sweeten, and grated lemon peel. 
Put the mixture, when perfectly smooth, into a mold, set it in ice or a very cool place, when it is turned out it should be covered with a fine custard. Apple Charlotte Prepare the apples as in the last receipt, but instead of using a jelly mold, put the apples into an oval cake tin about the size of a small side dish, 4 or 5 inches high, when cold, turn it out and cover the apple shape with Savoy cakes placed closely together perpendicularly, all round the top of the Charlotte should be covered with whites of eggs and sugar, beaten to a stiff froth, and placed in small balls, a salamander should be used to crisp them and to give a slight peach-like color, a tasteful cook will, after crisping the first layer of these balls, add others over them to form a sort of cone high in the center, that will have a pretty effect if well done. This is an easy and elegant entremet, and by no means an expensive one. A souffle. Take half a pint of cream and the same quantity of new milk, and warm them together in a clean saucepan, meanwhile make a smooth batter with 4 ounces of rice flour or potato flour, and stir into the milk, let it simmer, stirring all the time till it thickens, then add 2 to 3 ounces of fresh butter, and white sifted sugar enough to sweeten, and a little grated lemon peel, then take it off the fire and stir quickly to it the well beaten yolks of 6 to 8 eggs, butter the pan and pour the mixture into it, when on the point of being placed into the oven, add the whites of the eggs thoroughly whisked, the pan must be only half filled, as it will rise very high, it must be served immediately it is taken from the oven, even in passing to the dinner table a salamander should be held over it, to prevent its falling and becoming heavy and unsightly. The French flavor a souffle with orange flower water or vanilla, and the rind of a Seville orange is sometimes substituted for the rind of a lemon, there are dishes made expressly for souffles. A plain souffle. Mix well together 6 ounces of rice flour, arrowroot, or 2 lemois, with half a pint of milk flavored with essence of almond and lemon peel, or orange flour water, let it thicken over the fire, stirring to keep it smooth, sweeten with white sugar, add the beaten yolks of 5 eggs, proceed as in the last receipt, adding the whisked whites at the moment of placing the souffle into the oven, if there happen to be no souffle dish, a cake tin may make a tolerable substitute, a paper fringed. Should then line the tin and a napkin should be twisted round it when brought to table. A sweet omelette. Beat up three or four eggs, pour them into an omelette pan, and sprinkle a little white sugar over them while frying, hold a salamander or hot shovel over the uppermost side of the omelette, as it must only be fried on one side. As soon as it is set, slide it onto a hot dish, double it, and sprinkle sugar over it and serve quickly. Omelette souffle. Fry the eggs as directed for sweet omelette, using about 5 yolks and 2 whites, all of which require being finely beaten and strained. Soften a little preserve by holding it over the fire, or mixing a little warm water with it, spread it slightly over the omelette, have the remainder of the whites whisked to a froth with white sugar, and lay it on the preserve, slide the omelette onto a hot dish, double it, and serve directly. Fancy Creams Put into a basin a pint of cream, to which add 4 ounces of powdered white sugar, and the rind of a lemon rubbed on a lump of sugar, and a glass of sherry wine, whisk them well and mix with it half an ounce of dissolved isinglass, beat it all thoroughly together, and fill the mold, which should be set in ice till wanted. A tablespoonful of marasquino added to the above, will make Italian cream. A tablespoonful of fresh or preserved pineapple will make pineapple cream, this will require the addition of a little lemon syrup. A tablespoonful of ratafia, will make it ratify a cream. The juice of strawberries or raspberries make fine fruit creams, mill fruit cream is made by mixing with the cream any kind of small preserved fruit. Rice souffles. Boil well some fine picked rice, in pure fresh milk, sweeten and flavor with a bay leaf, lemon peel, and a stick of cinnamon, all which must be taken out when the rice is done, then line with it a round dish, or souffle dish, have ready apples previously boiled, sweetened, and beat up smoothly, place the apple lightly in the center rather higher in the middle than at the sides, beat up the whites of eggs to a froth, sweeten and flavor with lemon, or noyau essence, place it in small heaps. 
tastefully on the apple and rice, and brown delicately with a salamander. This sufl may have stewed cherries or any other kind of fruit, instead of the apples if preferred. Boiled custard. Take a pint of milk, let it simmer in a very clean saucepan, flavor it with lemon peel and a bay leaf, and sweeten to taste, while gently boiling, add the beaten yolks of four eggs, and the whites of two, continue stirring until the custard thickens, when it must be removed from the fire, but it is requisite to stir it until it cools. It is necessary to strain the milk before the eggs are added, and also to pass the eggs through a sieve. Custards are flavored sometimes with essence of almonds, a little cream added to the milk is a great improvement. The above mixture may be baked in small cups, they require a quarter of an hour to bake. Calves feet jelly. Boil two feet in two quarts, or five pints of water, till the water has half wasted, strain, and when cold, take off the fat, then put it in the saucepan with lump sugar, lemon juice, and white wine to taste, also a little lemon peel, when simmered a few minutes, throw in the whites of two eggs, and their shells broken, which will have the effect of clarifying the jelly, let it boil about 10 minutes after the scum rises, then pour it through a flannel bag or thick cloth, dipping the bag or cloth first into hot water, pass the jelly through it until clear, then pour it into molds and put them in a cool place to set. One calf's foot and one cow heel will be more economical than two calf's feet. If fruit is desired to be in the jelly, it must be put in when the jelly begins to stiffen in the mold. Orange Jelly This can be made with calf's feet or without. One quart of water will require one ounce of isinglass, simmer the isinglass in the water, and add the peel of one lemon and one orange, when the isinglass is dissolved, add the juice of a lemon and six fine oranges, although the quantity must vary according to the season for them, sweeten with half a pound of white sugar, a Seville orange is added if there should not be much flavor in the others. Lemon jelly is made in the same way, the peel of a Seville orange and of a lemon is used, with the juice of five lemons, rather more sugar will be required with this jelly than with the former. Punch jelly is made in the same way. An equal quantity of brandy and rum, with the juice of two or three lemons is mixed with the isinglass, which is dissolved in one pint of water, the other pint of liquid being made up by the lemon juice and spirits. The essence of noyau is reckoned to give an exquisite flavor, in this case it requires to be colored with a few drops of cochineal. An easy trifle. Soak three sponge cakes and half a pound of macaroons and ratafias in one wine glass of brandy and three of white wine, lay them at the bottom of the trifle dish, and pour over nearly a pint of thick rich custard, made of equal portions of milk and cream, with seven eggs, according to directions for custards, before the custard is added, jam and sweet meats are sometimes spread over the cakes, a fine light froth is prepared with cream and the whites of two eggs, flavored with wine and sugar. Heap it over the trifle lightly. A still more simple one, and quickly made. Soak ratafia cakes in wine, with a little brandy, pour over a thick custard, and cover with a froth of the white of eggs, flavored with wine and sweetened with white sugar. Blamange. To a quart of milk add half an ounce of fine isinglass, a handful of beaten almonds, and two or three bitter almonds, a couple of bay leaves, and a piece of lemon peel, when the isinglass is dissolved, strain the milk into a basin, sweeten with four ounces of white sugar, and pour into a mold. The juice of fresh strawberries is a fine addition to blamange.ayudita. Put some gooseberries into a saucepan with very little water, when they are soft, pulp them through a sieve, and add several well-beaten yolks of eggs, and sweeten with white sugar, have ready a shape of biscuit ice, or any other cream ice that may be preferred, take off a thick slice of the ice from the top carefully, and without breaking, so that it may be replaced on the ice. Scoop out a large portion of the ice which may be mixed with the gooseberry cream, and fill the hollow with it. Cover the shape with the piece that was removed and serve. This is an elegant dish, the ice should be prepared in a round mold brown bread ice is particularly well adapted to a yudita. Tour de la cream. This is a fashionable and delicate description of tart. A couple of round cutters about the size of a pie plate are required for it, 
one of the cutters must be about 2 inches smaller than the other, if they are fluted the tuert will have a better appearance. Roll out some very rich puff paste to the thickness of 1 inch, and cut two pieces with the larger tin cutter, then press the smaller cutter through one of these pieces, and remove the border which will be formed round it, this must be laid very evenly upon the other piece of paste, and slightly pressed to make it adhere, place the tuert in an oven to bake for about 20 minutes, then let it become cool, but not cold, and fill it with a fine custard or with any rich preserves, if the latter. A well whipped cream may be laid lightly over, the pastry may be glazed if approved. The Grosvenor Pudding Beat half a pound of butter with the same quantity of white sugar until it is like cream, then beat up five eggs and add them with half a pound of flour, a quarter of a pound of currants, two ounces of candied orange and lemon peel cut in thin slices, and a few drops of lemon essence, when these ingredients are well mixed and beaten, butter a pudding tin, pour in the mixture, and bake in a moderately quick oven. Citron Pudding Cut in slices 2 ounces of citron, the same quantity of candied orange and lemon peel, add to them 4 ounces of loaf sugar, and 4 of fresh butter, line a dish with fine puff paste, and beat up to a froth the yolks of 4 eggs and the whites of 2, fill the dish with these ingredients and bake half an hour. The dish should be shallow. Stewed Pears Peel, core, and quarter a dozen fine large baking pears, put them into a stew pan with half a pound of white sugar and sufficient cold water to cover them, with a small quantity of the peelings, a few cloves, and a little cochineal tied up in a muslin bag, let them stew gently, and closely covered until tender. Baked Pears Peel them and stick a couple of cloves in each pear, place them in a deep dish, with half a pound of brown sugar and a little water, let them bake till quite tender. Stewed Pippins Peel the pippins and stew them gently with a little water, white sugar, and a little lemon peel. Preserve is usually used to ornament the top of each apple. They should, when done, look white and rather transparent. Siesta Cake Take one pound of butter, warm it over the fire with a little milk, put it into a pan with a pound of flour, six eggs, a quarter of a pound of sweet almonds finely pounded, and two tablespoonsful of yeast. Beat these ingredients well together into a light paste, and set it before the fire to rise, butter the inside of a pan, and fill it with alternate layers of the paste, and of pounded almonds, sugar, citron, and cinnamon, when baked, and while hot, make holes through the siesta with a small silver skewer, taking care not to break it, and pour over clarified sugar till it is perfectly soaked through. A plain bola. Take three quarters of a pound of white sugar, three quarters of a pound of fresh butter, two eggs, one pound and a half of flour, three spoonsful of yeast, a little milk, and two ounces of citron cut thin, and mix into a light paste, bake in a tin, and strew powdered sugar and cinnamon over it before baking. The above ingredients are often baked in small tins or cups. Almond Tea Cakes Take half a pound of flour, three ounces of which are to be put aside for rolling out the cakes, the other five ounces, with a quarter of a pound of fresh butter, are to be set before the fire for a few minutes, after which mix with it half a pound of sugar, a quarter of a pound of sweet almonds, chopped fine, and a couple of eggs, make these ingredients into thin cakes, and strew over them ground almonds and white sugar, and bake in a brisk oven. Oil Twist Take half a quartern of dough, one gill of the best Florence oil, half a pound of currants, half a pound of moist sugar, and a little cinnamon, mix all well together, make it up in the form of a twist, and bake it. Cinnamon Cakes Rub half a pound of fresh butter into a pound of flour, work it well together, then add half a pound of sifted sugar, and a teaspoonful of pounded cinnamon, and make it into a paste, with three eggs, roll it, and cut into small cakes, with tin cutters. Rich Plum Cake Beat to a cream one pound of butter, to which add the same quantity of sifted loaf sugar and of fine flour, the whites of ten eggs beaten to a froth, and the yolks of the same also beaten till quite smooth and thin, and half a nutmeg grated. Lastly, work in one pound of well-washed currants, half a pound of mixed candied peels, cut small, and a glass of brandy, 
Bake for 2 hours. Diet bread cake. Beat together 5 eggs and half a pound of white sugar, then add 6 ounces of flour well dried and sifted, a little lemon juice and grated lemon peel, bake in a moderate oven. Drop cakes. Mix 1 pound of flour with the same quantity of butter, sugar, and currants, make these into a paste with a couple of eggs, add a little orange flour water and a little white wine, if the paste is likely to be too thin when two eggs are used, omit the white of one, drop the mixture when ready on a tin plate, and bake. A common cake. Rub in with one pound of flour six ounces of butter, and two teaspoonsful of yeast, to a paste, set it to rise, then mix in five eggs, half a pound of sugar, and a quarter of a pint of milk, add currants or caraways, and beat well together. If required to be richer, Put more butter and eggs, and add candied citron and lemon peel. A soda cake. Mix with the above ingredients 1 dram of soda, which should be rubbed in with the flour. This is reckoned a wholesome cake, and half the quantity of eggs are required, or it may be rendered a fine rich cake by increasing the quantity of eggs, butter, and fruit. A plain cake. Work into 2 pounds of dough a quarter of a pound of sugar, the same of butter, Add a couple of eggs, and bake in a tin. A pound cake. Beat to cream a pound of butter and a pound of sifted loaf sugar, add eight beaten eggs, stir in lightly three quarters of a pound of flour, beat well together, and bake for one hour in a brisk oven, currants may be added if, approved. Butter cakes. Take equal quantities of butter and sugar, say half a pound of each, grate the rind of a lemon, add a little cinnamon, and as much flour as will form it into a paste, with spice and eggs, roll it out, cut it into two small cakes, and bake. A piece of candied orange or lemon peel may be put on the top of each cake. Little short cakes. Rub into a pound of flour 4 ounces of butter, 4 ounces of white powdered sugar, and 2 eggs, make it into a paste, roll it thin, and cut into small cakes with tin cutters. A little orange flour water or sweet wine improve the flavor of these cakes. Matzo cakes. Make a stiff paste with biscuit powder and milk and water, add a little butter, the yolk of an egg, and a little white sugar, cut into pieces, and mold with the hand, and bake in a brisk oven. These cakes should not be too thin. Another sort. Warm a quarter of a pint of water flavored with a little salt, in which mix four beaten eggs, then mix half a pound of matzo flour, and a couple of lumps of white sugar, and half a teacup of milk, mix all well together, and bake in a tin. Fried matzos. Soak some of the thickest matzos in milk, taking care they do not break, then fry in boiling fresh butter. This is a very nice method of preparing them for breakfast or tea. Matzo diet bread. Simmer one pound of white sugar in a quarter of a pint of water, which pour hot upon eight well-beaten eggs, beat till cold, when add one pound of matzo flour, a little grated lemon peel, and bake in a paper tin, or in small tins, the cake must be removed while hot. A cake without butter. Beat well five eggs, to which add six ounces of flour, flavor with beaten almonds, and add, if liked, thin slices of citron, bake in a mold in a moderate oven. Sponge cakes. Mix 6 eggs, half the whites, half a pound of lump sugar, half a pound of flour, and a quarter of a pint of water, which should be strongly flavored by lemon peel having been in it for some hours, the sugar and water should boil up together, and poured over the eggs after they have been well whisked, which must be continued while the liquid is being poured over them, and until they become quite thick and white, then stir in the flour, which must be warm and dry. Pour the mixture into a couple of cake tins, and bake in a gentle oven. A nice breakfast cake. Make a paste of half a pound of flour, one ounce of butter, a very little salt, two eggs, and a tablespoonful of milk, roll it out, but first set it to rise before the fire, cut it into cakes the size of small cheese plates, sprinkle with flour, and bake on a tin in a brisk oven, or they may be fried in a clean frying pan, they should be cut in half, buttered hot, and served quickly. Icing for cakes. Whisk half a pound of sifted white sugar, 
with one wine glass of orange flower water, and the whites of two eggs, well beaten and strained, it must be whisked until it is quite thick and white, and when the cake is almost cold, dip a soft camel's hair brush into it, and cover the cake well, and set it in a cool oven to harden. To clarify sugar. Take the proportion of one pound of sugar to half a pint of water, with the whites of a couple of eggs, boil it up twice, then set it by for the impurities to rise to the top, and skim it carefully. Chapter 8. Preserving and Bottling. Attention and a little practice will ensure excellence in such preserves as are in general use in private families, and it will always be found a more economical plan to purchase the more rare and uncommon articles of preserved fruits than to have them made at home. The more sugar that is added to fruit the less boiling it requires. If jellies be overboiled, much of the sugar will become candied, and leave the jelly thin. Everything used for the purpose of preserving should be clean and very dry, particularly bottles for bottled fruit. Fruit should boil rapidly before the sugar is added, and quietly afterwards when preserves seem likely to become moldy, it is generally a sign they have not been sufficiently boiled, and it will be requisite to boil them up again. Fruit for bottling should not be too ripe, and should be perfectly fresh, there are various methods adopted by different cooks, the fruit may be placed in the bottles, and set in a moderate oven until considerably shrunken, when the bottles should be removed and closely corked, or the bottles may be set in a pan with cold water up to the necks, placed over the fire, when the fruit begins to sink remove them, and when cold fill up each bottle with cold spring water, cork the bottles, and lay them on their sides in a dry place. To bottle red currants pick them carefully from the stalk, and add, as the currants are put in, sifted white sugar, let the bottles be well filled and rosin the corks, and keep them with their necks downwards. Brandied cherries. Put into a large wide mouth bottle very ripe black cherries, add to them two pounds of loaf sugar, a quart of brandy, and a few cloves, then bruise a few more cherries, and simmer with sugar, strain, and add the juice to the cherries in the bottle, cork closely, and keep in a warm dry place. Quince marmalade. Peel, cut into quarters, and core two pounds of sharp apples, and the same quantity of quinces, put them into a jar, with one pound of white sugar powdered and sprinkled over them, cover them with half a pint of water, and put in also a little bruised cochineal tied in a muslin. Set them in a slack oven till tender, take out the cochineal, and pulp the fruit to a marmalade. Some cooks prefer boiling the sugar and water first and scalding the fruit till tender, and then adding them to the syrup. Damson marmalade is made in the same manner as quince, as also apricot marmalade, which is very fine, the fruit must be stoned, and some of the kernels put in with the fruit, which are peeled, and apricots are cut in pieces, they should be carefully pulped through a clean sieve. Preserved apricots Have and pair ripe apricots, or if not quite ripe, boil them till the skin can easily be removed. Lay them in a dish hollow downwards, sift over them their own weight of white sugar, let them lay for some hours, then put the fruit, with the sugar and juice into a preserving pan, and simmer till the fruit is clear, take it out, put it carefully into pots, and pour over the syrup. This receipt will serve as a guide for preserved nectarines, peaches, plums, gauges, and c. A few of the kernels should always be put in with the fruit, as they improve the flavor of the preserve. Strawberries preserved whole. Weigh an equal quantity of fruit and white sugar powdered, sift all the sugar over the fruit, so that half of it shall equally be covered, let it lay till the next day, when boil the remainder with red currant juice, in which simmer the strawberries until the jelly hangs about them. Put the strawberries into pots, taking care not to break them, and pour over the syrup. This receipt will serve for raspberries and cherries, which make a fine preserve. Strawberry Jam Bruise gently, with the back of a wooden spoon, six pounds of fine fresh fruit, and boil them with very little water for 20 minutes, stirring until the fruit and juice are well mixed, then put in powdered loaf sugar of equal weight to the fruit, and simmer half an hour longer. If the preserve is not required to be very rich, half the weight of sugar in proportion to the quantity of fruit may be used, 
but more boiling will be requisite. By this recipe also are made raspberry, currant, gooseberry, apricot, and other jams. Red Currant Jelly Strip carefully from the stem some quite ripe currants, put them into a preserving pan, stir them gently over a clear fire until the juice flows freely from them, then squeeze the currants and strain the juice through a folded muslin or jelly bag, pour it into a preserving pan, adding, as it boils, white sugar, in the proportion of one pound of sugar to one pint of juice. If made with less sugar, more boiling will be required, by which much juice and flavor are lost. A little dissolved isinglass is used by confectioners, but it is much better without. Jams and jellies should be poured into pots when in a boiling state. Jellies should be continually skimmed till the scum ceases to rise, so that they may be clear and fine. White currant jelly and black are made in the same manner as red. By this receipt can be made raspberry jelly, strawberry jelly, and all other kinds. Apple jelly. Pear, core, and cut small any kind of fine baking apples say 6 pounds in weight, put them in a preserving pan with 1 quart of water, boil gently till the apples are very soft and broken, then pass the juice through a jelly bag, when, to each pint, add half a pound of loaf sugar, set it on the fire to boil 20 minutes, scheming it as the scum rises, it must not be over boiled, or the color will be too dark. Pear syrup or jelly. This preparation, although little known in England, forms an important article of economy in many parts of the continent. The pears are first heated in a saucepan over the fire until the pulp, skins, and sea, have separated from the juice, which is then strained, and boiled with coarse brown sugar to the thickness of treacle, but it has a far more agreeable flavor. It is cheaper than butter or treacle, and is excellent spread upon bread for children. Plum Jam This is a useful and cheap preserve. Choose the large long black plum, to each gallon of which add 3 pounds of good moist sugar, bake them till they begin to crack, when, put them in pots, of a size for once using, as the air is apt to spoil the jam. Chapter 9 Pickling The best vinegar should always be used for pickling, in all cases it should be boiled and strained. The articles to be pickled should first be parboiled or soaked in brine, which should have about 6 ounces of salt to 1 quart of water. The spices used for pickling are whole pepper, long peppers, allspice, mace, mustard seed, and ginger, the last being first bruised. The following is a good proportion of spice, to 1 quart of vinegar put half an ounce of ginger, the same quantity of whole pepper and allspice, and 1 ounce of mustard seed, 4 shallots, and 1 clove of garlic. Pickles should be kept secure from the air, or they soon become soft, the least quantity of water, or a wet spoon, put into a jar of pickles, will spoil the contents. To pickle gherkins and French beans. These are, of all vegetables, the most difficult to pickle, so that their green color and freshness may be preserved. Choose some fine fresh gherkins, and set them to soak in brine for a week, then drain them, and pour over boiling vinegar, prepared with the usual spices, first having covered them with fresh vine leaves. If they do not appear to be of a fine green, pour off the vinegar, boil it up again, cover the gherkins with fresh green vine leaves, and pour over the vinegar again. French beans are pickled exactly the same. To pickle cauliflowers. Remove the stalks and leaves, break the flour into pieces, parboil them in brine, then drain them, and lay them in a jar, and pour over boiling spiced vinegar. To pickle melon mangoes. Cut the melons in half, remove the pulpy part and the seeds, soak the halves for a week in strong brine, then fill them with the usual spices, mustard seed, and garlic, and tie them together with pack thread, put them in jars, and pour over boiling spiced vinegar. Large cucumbers may be pickled in the same way. Pick a lily. Pickle gherkins, French beans, and cauliflower, separately, as already directed, the other vegetables used are carrots, onions, capsicums, white cabbage, celery, and, indeed almost any kind may be put into this pickle, except walnuts and red cabbage. They must be cut in small pieces, 
and soaked in brine, the carrots only, requiring to be boiled in it to make them tender, then prepare a liquor as follows, into half a gallon of vinegar put two ounces of ginger, one of whole black pepper, one of whole allspice, and one of bruised chilies, three ounces of shallots, and one ounce of garlic, boil together nearly twenty minutes, mix a little of it in a basin, with two ounces of flour of mustard and one ounce of turmeric, and stir it in gradually. With the rest, then pour the liquor over the vegetables. To pickle mushrooms. Choose small button mushrooms, clean and wipe them, and throw them into cold water, then put into a stew pan with a little salt, and cover them with distilled vinegar, and simmer a few minutes. Put them in bottles with a couple of blades or so of mace, and when cold, cork them closely. To pickle onions. Choose all of a size and soak in boiling brine, when cold, drain them and put them in bottles, and fill up with hot distilled vinegar, if they are to be white, use white wine vinegar, if they are to be brown, use the best distilled vinegar, adding, in both cases, a little mace, ginger, and whole pepper. To pickle white and red cabbage. Take off the outside leaves, cut out the stalk, and shred the cabbage into a colander, sprinkle with salt, let it remain for 24 hours, then drain it. Put it into jars, and fill up with boiling vinegar, prepared with the usual spices, if the cabbage is red, a little cochineal powdered, or a slice or two of beetroot is necessary to make the pickle a fine color, if it is white cabbage, add instead, a little turmeric powder. To pickle walnuts. Soak in brine for a week, prick them, and simmer in brine, then let them lay on a sieve to drain, and to turn black, after which place them in jars, and pour over boiling spiced vinegar. An old way of pickling cucumbers. Cut the cucumbers in small pieces, lengthways, with the peel left on, lay them in salt for 24 hours, then dry the pieces with a cloth, lay them in a deep dish, and pour over the following mixture, some vinegar boiled with cayenne pepper, whole ginger, a little whole pepper, and mustard seed, a few West India pickles are by some considered an improvement. This mixture should stand till nearly cold before covering the cucumbers, which should then be bottled. This pickle is fit for eating a few days after it is made, and will also keep good in a dry place as long as may be required. Chapter 10 Receipts for Invalids Beef Tea Cut one pound of fleshy beef in dice, or thin slices, simmer for a short time without water, to extract the juices, then add, by degrees, one quart of water, a little salt, a piece of lemon peel, and a sprig of parsley, are the only necessary seasonings, if the broth is required to be stronger put less water. Chicken Panada Boil a chicken till rather more than half done in a quart of water, take of the skin, cut off the white parts when cold, and pound it to a paste in a mortar, with a small quantity of the liquor it was boiled in, season with salt, a little nutmeg, and the least piece of lemon peel, boil it gently, and make it with the liquor in which the fowl has been boiled of the required consistency. It should be rather thicker than cream. Chicken Broth After the white parts have been removed for the panada, return the rest of the chicken to the saucepan, with the liquid, add one blade of mace, one slice only of onion, a little salt, and a piece of lemon peel, carefully remove every particle of fat. Vermicelli is very well adapted for this broth. Restorative Jellies There are various kinds of simple restorative jellies suited to an invalid, among the best are the following. Hearts Horn Jelly Boil half a pound of hearts horn shavings in two quarts of water over a gentle fire until it becomes thick enough to hang about a spoon, then strain it into a clean saucepan and add half a pint of sherry wine, and a quarter of a pound of white sugar, clear it by stirring in the whites of a couple of eggs, whisk to a froth, boil it for about 4 or 5 minutes, add the juice of 3 lemons, and stir all together, when it is well curdled, strain it and pour into the mold, if the color is required to be deeper than the wine will make it, a little saffron may be boiled in it. Barley Jelly Boil in an iron saucepan, 1 teacup full of pearl barley, with 1 quart of cold water, 
pour off the water when it boils, and add another quart, let it simmer very gently for 3 hours over or near a slow fire, stirring it frequently with a wooden spoon, strain it, and sweeten with white sugar, add the juice of a lemon, a little white wine, and a quarter of an ounce of isinglass dissolved in a little water, and pour it into a mold. This is a very nourishing jelly. Caudal. Make a fine smooth gruel of grits, with a few spices boiled in it, strain it carefully and warm as required, adding white wine and a little brandy, nutmeg, lemon peel, and sugar, according to taste, some persons put the yolk of an egg. Rice caudal. Boil half a pint of milk, add a spoonful of ground rice mixed with a little milk till quite smooth, stir it into the boiling milk, let it simmer till it thickens, carefully straining it, and sweeten with white sugar. Barley milk. Boil half a pound of pearl barley in one quart of new milk, taking care to parboil it first in water, which must be poured off, sweeten with white sugar. This is better made with pearl barley than the prepared barley. Restorative milk. Boil a quarter of an ounce of isinglass in a pint of new milk till reduced to half, and sweeten with sugar candy. Milk porridge. Make a fine gruel with new milk without adding any water, strain it when sufficiently thick, and sweeten with white sugar. This is extremely nutritive and fattening. Wine whey. Set on the fire in a saucepan a pint of milk, when it boils, pour in as much white wine as will turn it into curds, boil it up, let the curds settle, strain off, and add a little boiling water, and sweeten to taste. Tamarind whey. Boil 3 ounces of tamarinds in 2 pints of milk, strain off the curds, and let it cool. This is a very refreshing drink. Plain way. Put into boiling milk as much lemon juice or vinegar as will turn it, and make the milk clear, strain, add hot water, and sweeten. Orja. Beat 3 ounces of almonds with a tablespoonful of orange flower water, and 1 bitter almond, then pour 1 pint of new milk, and one pint of water to the paste, and sweeten with sifted white sugar, half an ounce of gum arabic is a good addition for those who have a tender chest. Irish moss. Boil half an ounce of carrageen or Irish moss, in a pint and a half of water or milk till it is reduced to a pint, it is a most excellent drink for delicate persons or weakly children. A fine soft drink for a cough. Add to a quarter of a pint of new milk warmed, a beaten new laid egg, with a spoonful of capillaire, and the same of rose water. A refreshing drink. Cut four large apples in slices, and pour over a quart of boiling water, let them stand till cold, strain the liquor, and sweeten with white sugar, a little lemon peel put with the apples improves the flavor. A very fine emollient drink. Wash and rinse extremely well one ounce of pearl barley, then put to it one ounce of sweet almonds beaten fine, and a piece of lemon peel, boil together till the liquor is of the thickness of cream and perfectly smooth, then put in a little syrup of lemon and capillaire. A cooling drink in fever. Put a little tea sage, and a couple of sprigs of balm into a jug, with a lemon thinly sliced, and the peel cut into strips, pour over a quart of boiling water, sweeten and let it cool. Appendix. French method of making coffee. Take in the proportion of one ounce of the berries to half a pint of water, and grind them at the instant of using them. Put the powder into a coffee biggin, press it down closely, and pour over a little water sufficient to moisten it, and then add the remainder by degrees, the water must be perfectly boiling all the time, let it run quite through before the top of the percolator is taken off, it must be served with an equal quantity of boiling milk. Coffee made in this manner is much clearer and better flavored than when boiled, and it is a much more economical method than boiling it. A French receipt for making chocolate. Take one ounce of chocolate, cut it in small pieces, and boil it about six or seven minutes with a small teacup full of water, stir it till smooth, then add nearly a pint of good milk, give it another boil, stirring or milling it well, and serve directly. If required very thick, a larger proportion of chocolate must be used. Egg wine. Beat a fresh egg, and add it to a tumbler of white wine and water, sweetened and spiced, set it on the fire, 
stir it gently one way until it thickens, this, with toast, forms a light nutritive supper. Mulled wine. Boil a little spice, cinnamon, ginger, and cloves, in water, till the flavor is gained, then add wine, as much as may be approved, sugar and nutmeg, a strip or two of orange rind cut thin will be found a great improvement. Asterisk 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 asterisk. To make punch. To make one quart, provide two fine fresh lemons, and rub off the outer peel upon a few lumps of sugar, put the sugar into a bowl with four ounces of powdered sugar, upon which press the juice of the lemons, and pour over one pint and a half of very hot water that has not boiled, then add a quarter of a pint of rum, and the same quantity of brandy, stir well together and strain it, and let it stand a few minutes before it is drank. Whiskey punch is made after the same method, the juice and thin peel of a Seville orange add variety of flavor to punch, particularly of whiskey punch. Milk punch. Put into a quart of new milk the thinly paired rind of a lemon, and four ounces of lump sugar, let it boil slowly, remove the peel, and stir in the yolks of two eggs, previously mixed with a little cold milk, add by degrees a teacup full of rum, the same of brandy, mill the punch to a fine froth, and serve immediately in quite warm glasses. The punch must not be allowed to boil after the eggs have been added. A French plum pie. Stew one pound of fine dried French plums until tender, in water, rather more than enough to cover, with one glass of port wine, and four ounces of white sugar, which must however not be added until the plums are quite tender, then pour them with the liquor into a pie dish, and cover with a rich puff paste, and bake. Roasted chestnuts for desserts. Chestnuts are so frequently sent to table uneatable, that we will give the French receipt for them. They should be first boiled for five minutes, and then finish them in a pan over the fire, they will after the boiling require exactly 15 minutes roasting, the skin must be slightly cut before they are cooked. To roast partridges and pheasants. They may be either peak or not, partridges require roasting rather more than half an hour, pheasants three quarters, if small, otherwise an hour, they are served with bread sauce. Partridges may be stewed as pigeons. To roast venison. Wipe the venison dry, sprinkle with salt, and cover with writing paper rubbed with clarified fat, cover this with a thick paste made of flour and water, round which, tie with pack thread white kitchen paper, so as to prevent the paste coming off, set the venison before a strong fire, and baste it directly and continue until it is nearly done, then remove the paper, paste, and see, draw the venison nearer the fire, dredge it with flour, and continue basting, it should only take a light brown, and should be rather under than overdone, a large haunch requires from 3 to 4 hours roasting, a small one not above 3. Serve with the knuckle, garnished with a fringe of white paper, and with gravy and red currant jelly, either cold or melted, in port wine, and served hot. A venison pasty. Having baked or boiled 2 hours in broth, with a little seasoning, any part selected, cut the meat in pieces, Season with cayenne pepper, salt, pounded mace, and a little allspice, place it into a deep dish, lay over thin slices of mutton fat, and pour a little strong beef gravy flavored with port wine into the dish, cover with a thick puff paste, and bake. Salmon pie. Cut two pounds of fine fresh salmon in slices about three quarters of an inch thick, and set them aside on a dish, clean and scrape five or six anchovies and have them, then chop a small puddle of mushrooms, a handful of fresh parsley, a couple of shallots, and a little green thyme. Put these together into a saucepan, with three ounces of butter, a little pepper, salt, nutmeg, and tarragon, add the juice of a lemon, and half a pint of good brown gravy, and let the whole simmer, gently stirring it all the time, also slice six eggs boiled hard, then line a pie dish with good short paste, and fill it with alternate layers of the slices of salmon, hard eggs, and fillets of anchovies, spreading between each layer the herb sauce, then cover the dish with the paste, and bake in a moderately heated oven. Chicken Pudding Line a basin with a good beef suet paste, and fill it with chicken, prepared in the following way, cut up a small chicken, 
lightly fry the pieces, then place them in a stew pan, with thin slices of chayasa, or, if at hand, slices of smoked veal, add enough good beef gravy to cover them, season with mushroom essence or powder, pepper, salt, and a very small quantity of nutmeg, and mace, simmer gently for a quarter of an hour, and fill the pudding, pour over part of the gravy and keep the rest. To be poured over the pudding when served in the dish. The pudding, when filled, must be covered closely with a paste, the ends of which should be wetted with a paste brush to make it adhere closely. A fine beef steak pie. Cut two pounds of beef steaks into large collops, fry them quickly over a brisk fire, then place them in a dish in two or three layers, strewing between each, salt, pepper, and mushroom powder, pour over a pint of strong broth, and a couple of tablespoons full of Harvey sauce, cover with a good beef suet paste, and bake for a couple of hours. The most delicate manner of preparing suet for pastry is to clarify it, and use it as butter, this will be found a very superior method for meat pastry. An easy receipt for a Charlotte Russ. Trim straightly about 6 ounces of Savoy biscuits, so that they may fit closely to each other, line the bottom and sides of a plain mold with them, then fill it with a fine cream made in the following manner, put into a stew pan 3 ounces of ratafias, 6 of sugar, the grated rind of half an orange, the same quantity of the rind of a lemon, a small piece of cinnamon, a wine glass full of good maraschino, or fine noyau, 1 pint of cream, and the well-beaten yolks of 6 eggs, stir this. Mixture for a few minutes over a stove fire, and then strain it, and add half a pint more cream, whipped, and 1 ounce of dissolved isinglass. Mix the whole well together, and set it in a basin embedded in rough ice, when it has remained a short time in the ice fill the mold with it, and then place the mold in ice, or in a cool place, till ready to serve. Another excellent receipt for a fruit charlotte. Line a jelly mold with fine picked strawberries, which must first be just dipped into some liquid jelly, to make them adhere closely, then fill the mold with some strawberry cream, prepared as follows, take a puddle of scarlet strawberries, mix them with half a pound of white sugar, rub this through a sieve, and add to it a pint of whipped cream, and one ounce and a half of dissolved isinglass, pour it into the mold, which must be immersed in ice until ready to serve, and then carefully turned out on the dish, and garnished according to fancy. Iced Pudding Parboil three quarters of a pound of Jordan almonds, and one quarter of bitter almonds, remove the skins and beat them up to a paste, with three quarters of a pound of white pounded sugar, add to this six yolks of beaten eggs, and one quart of boiled cream, stir the whole for a few minutes over a stove fire, strain it, and pour it into a freezing pot, used for making ices, it should be worked with a scraper, as it becomes set by freezing, when frozen sufficiently firm, fill a mold with it, cover it with a lid, and let it remain immersed in rough ice until the time for serving. Italian Salad Cut up the white parts of a cold fowl, and mix it with mustard and cress, and a lettuce chopped finely, and pour over a fine salad mixture, composed of equal quantities of vinegar and the finest salad oil, salt, mustard, and the yolks of hard-boiled eggs, and the yolk of one raw egg, mixed smoothly together, a little tarragon vinegar is then added, and the mixture is poured over the salad, the whites of the eggs are mixed, and served to garnish the dish, arranged in small heaps alternately with heaps of grated smoked beef, two or three hard-boiled eggs are cut up with the chicken in small pieces and mixed with the salad, this is a delicate and refreshing entree, the appearance of the salad may be varied by piling the fowl in the center of the dish, then pour over the salad mixture, and make a wall of any dressed salad, laying the whites of the eggs, after the yolks have been removed for the mixture, cut in rings on the top like a chain. The Toilette Chapter 1 The Complexion The various cosmetics sold by perfumers, assuming such miraculous powers of beautifying the complexion, all contain, in different proportions, preparations of mercury, alcohol, acids, and other deleterious substances, which are highly injurious to the skin, and their continual application will be found to tarnish it, and produce furrows and wrinkles far more unsightly than those of age, 
beside which they are frequently absorbed by the vessels of the skin, enter the system, and seriously disturb the general health. A fine fresh complexion is best ensured by the habitual use of soft water, a careful avoidance of all irritants, such as harsh wines, dust, smoke, a scorching sun, and fire heat, a strict attention to diet, regular ablutions, followed by friction, frequent bathing, and daily exercise, active enough to promote perspiration, which, by carrying off the vicious secretions, purifies the system, and perceptibly heightens the brilliancy of the skin. These are the simple and rational means pursued by the females of the East to obtain a smooth and perfect skin, which is their made an object of great care and consideration. And it is a plan attended, invariably, with the most complete success. Cosmetic baths, composed of milk, combined with various emollient substances are also in frequent use among the higher classes in the East, and we have been informed that they are gradually gaining favor in France and England. We shall give the receipt for one, as we received it from the confidential attendant of an English lady, who is in the habit of using it every week, and we can confidently recommend it to the notice of our readers. The luxurious ladies of ancient Rome, who sacrificed so much time and attention to the adornment of their persons, always superintended the preparation of their cosmetics, which were of the most innocent and simple description the first receipt we subjoin was one in general use with them, and will be found efficacious in removing roughness, or coarseness, arising from accidental causes, and imparting that polished smoothness so essential to beauty. An old Roman receipt for improving the skin. Boil a dessert spoonful of the best wheaten flour with half a pint of fresh ass's milk, when boiling, stir in a tablespoonful of the best honey, and a teaspoonful of rose water, then mix smoothly, place in small pots, and use a little of it after washing, it is better not to make much at a time, as when stale it is liable to irritate the skin. A valuable receipt for the skin. Boil in half a pint of new milk a thick slice of stale bread, and a teaspoonful of gum arabic, when boiled, set it at a little distance from the fire to simmer almost to a jelly, then pass it through a folded muslin, and stir in a spoonful of oil of almonds, and the same quantity of honey, with a pinch of common salt, when cold it will be a stiff jelly. A little of this mixture warmed and spread upon the skin, about the thickness of a crown piece, and left until it cools, will remove, like magic, all appearance of the dry scurf to which some of the finest skins are subject. An emollient paste. Blanch half a pound of sweet almonds, and two ounces of bitter almonds, and pound them in a mortar, then make them into a paste with rose water, this paste is a fine emollient. A superior ointment for chaps, roughness, etc. Mix with a gill of fresh cream a spoonful of beaten almonds, when perfectly smooth put it in toilette pots, and use as ointment for chaps, and see, it will keep for a week if a little spirit of camphor is added to it. Wash for pimples. Dissolve half a dram of salt of tartar in three ounces of spirit of wine, and apply with soft linen, this is an excellent wash for pimples, but, as these are in general the result of some derangement of the system, it will be wiser to discover and remedy the cause, than merely attending to the result. Lotion for removing freckles. Mix one dram of spirit of salts, half a pint of rain water, and half a teaspoonful of spirit of lavender, and bottle for use. This lotion will often be efficacious in removing freckles. Cold cream. Warm gently together 4 ounces of oil of almonds, and 1 ounce of white wax, gradually adding 4 ounces of rose water, this is one of the best receipts for making cold cream. A fine soap. Blanch and beat to a paste 2 ounces of bitter almonds, with a small piece of camphor, and 1 ounce and a half of tincture of benjamin, add 1 pound of curd soap in shavings, and beat and melt well together, and pour into molds to get cool, the above is a very fine soap. Lip salve. Mix together one ounce of white wax, the same of beef marrow, with a small piece of alkanet root tied up in muslin, perfume it according to fancy, strain, and pot while hot, the above is a fine salve for chapped lips. Chestnut paste for rendering the hands white and soft. Boil a dozen fine large chestnuts, peeled and skinned, 
in milk, when soft beat them till perfectly smooth with rose water, a teaspoonful of this mixture thrown into the water before washing the hands renders them beautifully white and soft. Superior Milk of Roses Boil fresh rose leaves in ass's milk, and bottle it off for immediate use, it will be found far more efficacious than the milk of roses sold by perfumers. An excellent receipt for lip salve. Melt one ounce of spermaceti, soften sufficiently with oil of almonds, color it with two or three grains of powdered cochineal, and pour while warm into small toilet pots. We mention the cochineal to color the salve, it being usual to make lip salve of a pale rose color, but we should consider it far more healing in its effects without it. A Cosmetic Bath Boil slowly one pound of starwort in two quarts of water, with half a pound of linseed, six ounces of the roots of the water lily, and one pound of bean meal, when these have boiled for two hours, strain the liquor, and add to it two quarts of milk, one pint of rose water, and a wine glass of spirits of camphor, stir this mixture into a bath of about 98 degrees. Superior Cold Cream Melt together one dram of spermaceti, the same quantity of white wax, and two fluid ounces of oil of almond, while these are still warm, beat up with them as much rose water as they will absorb. This is a very healing kind of cold cream. The usual cold cream sold by perfumers is nothing more than lard, beat up with rose water, which is heating and irritating to the skin. Paste for rendering the skin supple and smooth, an English receipt. Mix half a pound of mutton or goose fat well boiled down and beaten up well with two eggs, previously whisked with a glass of rose water, add a tablespoonful of honey, and as much oatmeal as will make it into a paste. Constant use of this paste will keep the skin delicately soft and smooth. To remove 10. Cut a cucumber into pieces after having peeled it, and let the juice drain from it for 12 hours, pour it off, and add to it an equal quantity of orange flower water, with a small piece of camphor dissolved in a wine glass of soft water, bottle the mixture, and wash the parts that have been exposed to the sun two or three times in the 24 hours. Eau de Cologne Mix together one ounce of essence of bergamot, the same quantity of essence of lemon, lavender and orange flower water, two ounces of rosemary and honey water, with one pint of spirits of wine, let the mixture stand a fortnight, after which put it into a glass retort, the body of which immerse in boiling water contained in a vessel placed over a lamp, a coffee lamp will answer the purpose, while the beak of the retort is introduced into a large decanter, keep the water boiling while the mixture distills into the decanter, which should be covered with cold wet cloths, in this manner excellent eau de cologne may be obtained at a very small expense. Transparent Soap Put into a bottle, Windsor soap in shavings, half fill it with spirits of wine, set it near the fire till the soap is dissolved, when, pour it into molds to cool. Milk of Roses Put into a bottle one pint of rose water, one ounce of oil of almonds, shake well together, then add 50 drops of oil of tartar. Hungary Water Put into a bottle one pint of spirits of wine, one gill of water, and half an ounce of oil of rosemary, shake well together. Lavender Water Take three drams of English oil of lavender, spirits of wine one pint, shake in a quart bottle, then add one ounce of orange flower water, one ounce of rose water, and four ounces of distilled water, those who approve of the musky odor which lavender water sometimes has, may add three drams of essence of ambergris or musk. Essence of Roses Put into a bottle the petals of the common rose, and pour upon them spirits of wine, cork the bottle closely, and let it stand for three months, it will then be little inferior to auto of roses. Essence of Lavender Is prepared according to the above recipe, the lavender being substituted for the roses. Scent Bags Small bags filled with iris root diffuses a delicate perfume over drawers, and see. A good receipt for a scent bag is as follows, 2 pounds of roses, half a pound of cypress powder, and half a dram of essence of roses, the roses must be pounded, and with the powder put into silk bags, the essence may be dropped on the outside. Essence of Musk Mix one dram of musk with the same quantity of pounded loaf sugar, 
add 6 ounces of spirits of wine, shake together and pour off for use. Oil of Roses A few drops of otto of roses dissolved in spirits of wine forms the esprit de rose of the perfumers the same quantity dropped in sweet oil forms their huile antique a la rose. Chapter 2 The Hair All stimulating lotions are injurious to the hair, it should be cut every two months, to clean it, there is nothing better than an egg beaten up to a froth, to be rubbed in the hair, and afterwards washed off with elder flower water, but clear soft water answers every purpose of cleanliness, and is far better for the hair than is usually imagined. One teaspoonful of honey, one of spirits of wine, one of rosemary, mixed in half a pint of rose water, or elder flower water, and the same quantity of soft water, forms an excellent lotion for keeping the hair clean and glossy. A fine pomatum is made by melting down equal quantities of mutton suet and marrow, uncooked, and adding a little sweet oil to make it of a proper consistency, to which any perfume may be added. If essence of rosemary is the perfume used, it will be found to promote the growth of the hair. Rum and oil of almonds will be of use for the same purpose. A warm cloth to rub the hair after brushing imparts a fine shiny smoothness. As a bandoline to make the hair set close, the following will be found useful and cheap, take a cupful of linseed, pour over it sufficient boiling water to over, let it stand some hours, and then pour over three tablespoons full of rose water, stir the seeds well about, and strain it off into a bottle and it will be ready for use, or take a teaspoonful of gum arabic with a little Irish moss, boil them in half a pint of water till half is boiled away, strain and perfume. To remove superfluous hairs, the following receipt will be found effectual, although requiring time and perseverance, mix one ounce of finely powdered pumice stone with one ounce of powdered quicklime, and rub the mixture on the part from which the hair is to be removed, twice in 24 hours, this will destroy the hair, and is an innocent application. In the East, a depilatory is in use, which we subjoin, but which requires great care in employing, as the ingredients are likely to injure the skin if applied too frequently, or suffered to remain on too long, mix with one ounce of quicklime, one ounce of orpiment, put the powder in a bottle with a glass stopper, when required for use, mix it into a paste with barley water, apply this over the part, and let it remain some minutes, then gently take it off with a silver knife, and the hairs will be found perfectly removed. The part should then be fomented to prevent any of the powder being absorbed by the skin, and a little sweet oil or cold cream should be wiped over the surface with a feather. Chapter 3 Teeth Water is not always sufficient to clean the teeth, but great caution should be used as to the dentifrices employed. Charcoal, reduced to an impalpable powder, and mixed with an equal quantity of magnesia, renders the teeth white, and stops putrefaction. Also 2 ounces of prepared chalk, mixed with half the quantity of powdered myrrh, may be used with confidence. Or, 1 ounce of finely powdered charcoal, 1 ounce of red kino, and a tablespoonful of the leaves of sage, dried and powdered. A most excellent dentifrice, which cleans and preserves the teeth, is made by mixing together 2 ounces of brown rapee snuff, 1 of powder of bark, and 1 ounce and a half of powder of myrrh. When the gums are inclined to shrink from the teeth, cold water should be used frequently to rinse the mouth, a little alum, dissolved in a pint of water, a teacup full of sherry wine, and a little tincture of myrrh or bark, will be found extremely beneficial in restoring the gums to a firm and healthy state. This receipt was given verbally by one of our first dentists. Every precaution should be used to prevent the accumulation of tartar upon the teeth, this is best done by a regular attention to cleanliness, especially during and after illness. Prevention is always better than cure, and the operation of scaling often leaves the teeth weak and liable to decay. Acids of all sorts are injurious to the teeth, and very hot or cold liquids discolor them. The best toothpick is a finely pointed stick of cedar. Toothbrushes should not be too hard, and should be used, not only to the teeth, but to the gums, as friction is highly salutary to them. To polish the front teeth, it is better to use a piece of flannel than a brush. Toothache is a very painful malady, 
and the sufferer often flies to the most powerful spirits to obtain relief, but they afford only temporary ease, and lay the foundation for increased pain. A poultice laid on the gum not too hot takes off inflammation or laudanum and spirits of camphor applied to the cheek externally, or mix with spirits of camphor an equal quantity of myrrh, dilute it with warm water, and hold it in the mouth, also a few drops of laudanum and oil of cloves applied to decayed teeth often affords instantaneous relief. Powdered cloves and powdered alum, rubbed on the gum and put in the diseased tooth will sometimes lessen the pain. Toothache often proceeds from some irritation in the digestive organs or the nervous system, in such cases pain can only be removed by proper medical treatment. Chapter 4 Hands Nothing contributes more to the elegance and refinement of a lady's appearance than delicate hands, and it is surprising how much it is in the power of all, by proper care and attention, to improve them. Gloves should be worn at every opportunity, and these should invariably be of kid. Silk gloves and mittens, although pretty and tasteful, are far from fulfilling the same object. The hands should be regularly washed in tepid water, as cold water hardens, and renders them liable to chap, while hot water wrinkles them. All stains of ink, and C, should be immediately removed with lemon juice and salt, every lady should have a bottle of this mixture on her toilette ready prepared for the purpose. The receipts which we have already given as emollients for the skin are suitable for softening the hands and rendering them smooth and delicate. The nails require daily attention, they should be cut every two or three days in an oval form. A piece of flannel is better than a nail brush to clean them with, as it does not separate the nail from the finger. When dried, a little pumice stone, finely powdered, with powdered orris root, in the proportion of a quarter of a teaspoonful to a teaspoonful of the former, mixed together, and rubbed on the nails gently, gives them a fine polish, and removes all inequalities. A piece of sponge, dipped in oil of roses and emery, may be used for the same purpose. When the nails are disposed to break, a little oil or cold cream should be applied at night. Sand balls are excellent for removing hardness of the hands. Palm soap, Castile soap, and those which are the least perfumed, should always be preferred. Night gloves are considered to make the hands white and soft, but they are attended with inconvenience, besides being very unwholesome, and the hands may be rendered as white as the nature of the complexion will allow, by constantly wearing gloves in the daytime, and using any of the emollients we have recommended for softening and improving the skin. Chapter 5 Dress in dress, simplicity should be preferred to magnificence, it is surely more gratifying to be admired for a refined taste, than for an elaborate and dazzling splendor, the former always produces pleasing impressions, while the latter generally only provokes criticism. Too costly an attire forms a sort of fortification around a woman which wards off the admiration she might otherwise attract. The true art of dress is to make it harmonize so perfectly with the style of countenance and figure as to identify it, as it were, with the character of the wearer. All ornaments and trimmings should be adopted sparingly, trinkets and jewelry should seldom appear to be worn merely for display, they should be so selected and arranged as to seem necessary, either for the proper adjustment of some part of the dress, or worn for the sake of pleasing associations. Fashion should never be followed too closely, still less should a singularity of style be affected, the prevailing mode should be modified and adapted to suit individual peculiarity. The different effect of colors and the various forms of dress should be duly considered by every lady, as a refined taste in dress indicates a correct judgment. A short stout figure should avoid the loose flowing robes and ample drapery suitable for tall slight women, while these again should be cautious of adopting fashions which compress the figure, give formality, or display angles. The close-fitting corsage and tight sleeve, becoming to the short, plump female, should be modified with simple trimmings, to give fullness and width across the shoulders and bust, and a rounded contour to the arms. Flounces and tucks, which rise high in the skirt, are not suitable to short persons, they cut the figure and destroy symmetry. To tall women, on the contrary, they add grace and dignity. Dresses made half high are extremely unbecoming, they should either be cut close up to the throat or low. 
It is, however, in bad taste to wear them very low on the shoulders and bosom, in youth, it gives evidence of the absence of that modesty which is one of its greatest attractions, and in maturer years it is the indication of a depraved coquetry, which checks the admiration it invites. It is always requisite for a lady to exert her own taste in the choice of form, color, and style, and not leave it to the fancy of her dressmaker, as although the person she employs may be eminently qualified for her profession, a lady who possesses any discernment can best judge of what is suitable to her style of countenance and figure. In dress there should be but one prevailing color, to which all others should be adapted, either by harmonizing with it, or by contrast, in the latter case the relieving color should be in small quantity, or it would overpower the other in effect, as a general rule, somber negative colors show off a woman to the greatest advantage, just as the beauties of a painting are enhanced by being set in a dull frame, still, there are some occasions with which the gayer tints accord better, and as propriety and fitness are matters of high consideration, the woman of taste must be guided in the selection of her apparel by the knowledge of the purport for which it is intended, always endeavoring to fix on that shade of color which best becomes her complexion. Chapter 6 Effect of Diet on Complexion as the color of the skin depends upon the secretions of the reedy mucuosum, or skin, which lies immediately beneath the epidermis, or scarf skin, and as diet is capable of greatly influencing the nature of these secretions, a few words respecting it may not be here entirely misplaced. All that is likely to produce acrid humors, and an infl amatory or impoverished state of the blood, engenders vicious secretions, which nature struggles to free herself from by the natural outlet of the skin, for this organ is fitted equally, to excrete and secrete. Fermented and spirituous liquors, strong tea and coffee should be avoided, for they stimulate and exhaust the vital organs, and interrupt the digestive functions, thereby producing irritation of the internal linings of the stomach, with which the skin sympathizes. Water, on the other hand, is the most wholesome of all beverages, it dilutes and corrects what is taken into the stomach, and contributes to the formation of a perfect chyle. Milk is very nutritious, it produces a full habit of body, and promotes plumpness, restores vigor and freshness, besides possessing the property of calming the passions, and equalizing the temper. Eggs are, in general, considered bilious, except in a raw state, when they are precisely the reverse, this is a fact now so universally acknowledged, that they are always recommended in cases of jaundice and other disorders of the bile. Spices, and highly seasoned meats import a dryness to the skin, and render the body thin and meager. Animal food taken daily requires constant exercise, or it is apt to render the appearance coarse and gross. It should be combined with farinaceous and vegetable food, in order to correct the heating effects of a concentrated animal diet. Excess as to quantity should be strictly guarded against. When the stomach is overloaded it distributes a badly digested mass throughout the system, which is sure to be followed by irritation and disease, and by undermining the constitution, is one of the most certain methods of destroying beauty. Chapter 7 Influence of the Mind as Regards Beauty All passions give their corresponding expression to the countenance, if of frequent occurrence they mark it with lines as indelible as those of age, and far more unbecoming. To keep these under proper control is, therefore, of high importance to beauty. Nature has ordained that passions shall be but passing acts of the mind, which, serving as natural stimulants, quicken the circulation of the blood, and increase the vital energies, consequently, when tempered and subdued by reason, they are rather conducive than otherwise, both to beauty and to health. It is the habitual frame of mind, the hourly range of thought which render the countenance pleasing or repulsive, we should not forget that the face is the index of the mind. The exercise of the intellect and the development of noble sentiments is as essential for the perfection of the one, as of the other, fretful, envious, malicious, ill-humored feelings must never be indulged by those who value their personal appearance, for the existence of these chronic maladies of the mind, cannot be concealed. On put tromper on otra, mais pas tout les autres. In the same way candor, benevolence, pity and good temper, 
exert the most happy influence over the whole person, shine forth in every look and every movement with a fascination which wins its way to all hearts. Symmetry of form is a rare and exquisite gift, but there are other conditions quite as indispensable to beauty. Let a woman possess but a very moderate share of personal charms, if her countenance is expressive of intellect and kind feelings, her figure buoyant with health, and her attire distinguished by a tasteful simplicity, she cannot fail to be eminently attractive, while ill health a silly or unamiable expression, and a vulgar taste will mar the effect of form and features the most symmetrical. A clever writer has said, beauty is but another name for that expression of the countenance which is indicative of sound health, intelligence, and good feeling. If so, how much of beauty is attainable to all? Health, though often dependent upon circumstances beyond our control, can, in a great measure, be improved by a rational observance of the laws which nature has prescribed, to regulate the vital functions. Over intellect we have still more power. It is capable of being so trained as to approach daily nearer and nearer to perfection. The thoughts are completely under our own guidance and must never be allowed to wander idly or sinfully, they should be encouraged to dwell on subjects which elevate the mind and shield it from the petty trivialities which irritate and degrade it. Nothing is more likely to engender bitter thoughts than idleness and ennui. Occupations should be selected with a view to improve and amuse, they should be varied, to prevent the lassitude resulting from monotony, serious meditations and abstract studies should be relieved by the lighter branches of literature, music should be assiduously cultivated, nothing more refines and exalts the mind, not the mere performance of mechanical difficulties, either vocal or instrumental, for these, unless pursued with extreme caution, enlarge the hand and fatigue the chest, without imparting the advantages we allude to. Drawing is highly calculated to enhance feminine beauty, the thoughts it excites are soothing and serene, the gentle enthusiasm that is felt during this delightful occupation not only dissipates melancholy and morbid sensibility, but by developing the judgment and feeling, imparts a higher tone of character to the expression of the countenance. Indolent persons are apt to decide that they have no taste for such or such pursuits, forgetting that tastes may be acquired by the mind as well as by the palate, and only need a judicious direction. Frivolous employment, and vitiated sentiments would spoil the finest face ever created. Body and mind are, in fact, so intimately connected, that it is futile, attempting to embellish the one, while neglecting the other, especially as the highest order of all beauty is the intellectual. Let those females, therefore, who are the most solicitous about their beauty, and the most eager to produce a favorable impression, cultivate the moral, religious, and intellectual attributes, and in this advice consists the recipe for the finest cosmetic in the world, viz. content. The End